Hello, everyone, and welcome to tonight's episode of Critical Role, where a bunch of us nerdy-ass voiced actors sit around and play Dungeons and Dragons, and Sam makes noise from his phone over there, strangely. I can't turn it off! What's um, So, a couple things. One, uh, you'll notice that we're, we're down two players tonight. Uh, that's because, apparently, some babies can't wait. Um, so, so there is there is currently a new addition to the Critical Role team right now. More information, Yay! more information will be made available as as yeah, the parents see fit. But um, I'm glad that I worked towards a narrative exit for them that they couldn't be there for. <laughs> so anyway, uh, we love you, Travis. super excited. We love you guys so we much. You. Seriously, you're amazing, and I look forward to. To meet in the new one I love very can't soon. Emote. I can't smile. Could, could it, could it, <laughs> just, just saying, they, they could have held the baby five more hours. I feel like, I feel like they could have. Just saying, then we could have shared. Uh, we could have shared a birthday. You yeah. had to wait seventy-two it's hours. The best day. It's the best day. <laughs> so much is going on. Oh. My nephew's here. So many things are happening behind the scenes. It is the best day. <laughs> It's it's crazy. Crazy. It's it's the best day. So, <laughs> um, so, anyway, let's go ahead and get through our announcements real fast. Uh, first and foremost, a uh, big thank you to our uh, returning fantastic sponsors of this campaign, D and D Beyond. Woo! Sam, if you don't Beyond. mind, <clears throat> guys, I didn't know this. The D and D Beyond discount code eight two six LA is still active for the twenty five percent off the legendary bundle. I did not know that. It will be expiring soon, so please make sure to check out the legendary bundle on the D and D Beyond marketplace. Also, the site will be undergoing some maintenance tomorrow, Friday morning, starting at seven a.m. Pacific for a few hours. The site will be in read only mode at this time. So, I don't know what that means. <laughs> um, also, uh, the product director, Adam Br Bradford, will be hosting a stream at 9 a.m. Pacific during maintenance with some exciting announcements. Oh, Adam's great. Oh, uh, be sure to tune in to twitch.tv slash dndbeyond, not and, to check it all out. Um, and uh, just for my little uh, extra here tonight, not getting lost in the fact that Travis and Laura are having the most a magical day of their lives and Liam is gone, I wanted to pay special tribute to our little Ashley, who's who's leaving us for a while. Yes. I feel like no. she should get some love, too, on her way out the door. <laughs> so I composed a song. Love you love you. What's happening? I composed a song for you in the style of your favorite band, Boys to men. <clears throat> uh, yes. Ah. How did you know? Yes. How do I say goodbye? Shit. <laughs> to our sweet, innocent harbinger of death, fallen angel. <laughs> On NBC, you play a geek, but you're a real one here with us every week. <laughs> if we get to visit your house, I hope Blindspot will let you play. <laughs> but until then, I hope Patterson dies <laughs> every day. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Sam. Yay. <laughs> That's hard to do in a mustache. I can see the so yeah. black of committing so to this nice. all night. This is what I did the first time through the campaign. Holy so that's what I gotta do oh this time. No. Holy shit. Oh no. really? I thought this was for your opening gag. Me no, this too. is what I wore this, yeah, this no. time in the first campaign. I remember. So so yeah. Stefan's making your lip. It's so it's on so this stupid. show where Ashley is is about to leave, baby Bailey Ham has just been born. Yes, I'm in the woods and we're about to move. You decided to wear that for the entire episode. I did not decide. <laughs> this was put upon me by the fates. That's, <laughs> you made that though. Yeah, yeah. You I can't <laughs> unmake it. Yep, it is a thing. Congratulations. It's been a while. Is the monkey smoky or the bandit? Oh, I can never the remember. Monkey's tear, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Good. Well, as long as so on your face, you will get no sugar from me, Sam. Right no. <laughs> good, no. Good. All right. Well, thank you very much, Dean, to be on. Thank you, Sam. A couple other announcements. Um, because we're doing this move, there will not be a Critical Role or Tox Machina next week. 
Um, so we'll be missing you guys that week. We'll, we'll see you on social media and stuff and having chats to, to keep us all uh, through our withdrawal that we'll be suffering, and <laughs> some of you, I'm sure, will as well. Um, but we'll be back the week after that, so the second week of July, we'll be picking up with the Tox Machina of tonight's episode, uh, then hosted by our fantastic Brian W. Foster, uh, and then the following Thursday, the following episode, uh, in which we will have a guest, maybe two, joining us. Oh. Um, oh what? Yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, so look for one of them be a baby. No. <laughs> no. Okay. Uh, I'm not. I'm not that good at teaching this game. <laughs> I think language is an important barrier <laughs> to you, teaching the indie. You're pretty good, though. Uh, yeah. Um, so anyway, uh, just so you guys are aware. Um, also, we have. Uh, if those who haven't seen on social media. Welcome. Oh, yeah. We just launched a Kickstarter with our good friends at Steamforged Games. Holy shit, that's right. That's also going that's also on. Yeah. Is, is Steamforged yeah. is Every day feels like a year. So if you guys don't know, we launched a Kickstarter. It's a short form Kickstarter for our line of Vox Machina and Mighty Nine miniatures. So for those who aren't aware or familiar, we have an entire line of highly detailed, super high quality plastic minis of all of Vox Machina, including Trinket, uh, mm -hmm. And all of Mighty Nine, you have. Uh, there are stretch. Oh, not to say stretch goals. There are Kickstarter exclusive rewards that include uh, Pumat Prime for the Mighty Nine and his three simulacrum, <laughs> uh, as well as on. Uh, uh, we have a fantastic Tarion Darrington oh, so yeah. and Doty and a Doty yeah, for the amazing. for the Vox Machina side. Yes. Um, so so go ahead and check it out. It's going to be up there for another week or so, I believe. Um, if you can't afford it right now, you can even put a dollar in there, and we'll, we'll have opportunities down the road, hopefully, for you to jump in if you missed it the first round. Oh, cool. um, but when it comes down to it, you get uh, eight minis for Vox Machina. Uh, you get the Mighty Nine uh, minis as well, another eight minis. Uh, Shikasta. With Shikasta yeah. involved in there. All the Pumats as well, and the extra bonus features of Terry and Doty, uh, all for 60 bucks. Which is a pretty fantastic it's package pretty for the quality of these uh, and for They're the collectible really aspect of it. So, gorgeous. if you like it, help make it happen more. And the it's boxes already are exploded. Lovely. It's nuts. so cool. I haven't seen the boxes. I don't know. If I probably shouldn't spoil that, but no, like, no, no. it's pretty cool. Oh, that's cool. I should see that. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> we're super excited about it. You guys have already blown it out of the water. Uh, if you haven't had the opportunity, now's the time to jump in, and I hope you enjoy them. Um, so, I believe that's all the rest of the announcements we have. I'm so emotional. So, let's bring it in to tonight's episode of Critical Role. <laughs> Welcome back. So that was a good one. Well, that's great. Uh, <laughs> um, so last we left off, the Mighty Nine in making their way northward towards their eventual goal of Shady Creek Run to complete their second mission that they accepted from the gentleman in Zadash, had been traversing the countryside, made their way to the city of Hubberduk, the largely gnomish uh, cultural city there of industry and uh, currently construction of war machines to send towards the conflict with Jorahas to the east. There you saw the very 
hearty uh, work atmosphere of the gnomes, and then the evening, very crazy party atmosphere in which uh, many of you dove into uh, some hard drinking, a hard drinking contest. You won the title of the uh, the Blushing Tankard Tavern, uh, beating out their old champions, and woke up with terrible hangovers and realizing that most of your gold had been stolen. Upon doing some sleuthing around the town, you had uh, bullied a couple of bullies that were pushing Rissa around. They'd been a problem for a while. Sent them pinging their pants and rushing. Uh, you spoke with Rissa's uh, father and his his uh, kind of tinkering uh, inventor store, in which you discovered a shiny object, a, a fantastic experimental uh, hand crossbow construct of his that he would be interested in relinquishing without payment if you do him the favor uh, of correcting a mistake he made a while back. Apparently, he crafted. Uh, on the request of the starosta of the city, a powerful gear keeper, a, a, a construct-like uh, entity that was meant to help be a warden within the prison that went crazy, killed a bunch of people, and they sealed it off, and it's just kind of been there, forgotten, ever since. So, you said you take a look at this. Eventually, you discovered that the money you had lost had been taken by four children who currently are without parents, who have been kind of living on the streets here uh, in the city of Hubberduk, while their folks had been sent to the prison six months before for being caught worshiping uh, unapproved deities within the Empire. You, after having this conversation with them, retrieving your, your money, your funds, uh, and leaving Kiri with them for the time being for safekeeping, decided to see if you had the possibility to prevent them from being sent to a, an Empire-run orphanage in the hopes of uh, freeing their parents in some way, shape, or form from their binds. And that was where we had left off. So, where are we now? Are we still in the butcher? You guys have stepped out of the uh, the, the butcher home, leaving the kids behind with Kiri, and you're now out in the open streets of Hupperduk, uh, kind of late morning, midday. What would you like to do? Is Risa still there? Uh, Risa is still with you. Risa, yes. sorry. Yeah. Okay. Um, you said late morning, midday. Mm -hmm. So we could we could at least go check out this prison and do some scouting before nightfall, yeah? Yeah, probably? we were talking about planning and then sleeping and then going. If we okay. see those teenagers also, we should probably call them off. Yes, oh, absolutely. the teenagers. I really would hate for our problem with them to end up coming and finding the kids. My words aren't really here right now. You know what I mean. Yeah, you just had a baby, I yeah. understand. <laughs> Emotionally. Emotionally. Yeah. Uh. Yeah, do we want to leave it up to chance that those that we'll run into those two kids the or very, that they will not succeed or, or the, find them? At the very least, we can leave word with their employer, and if we run into them, we'll I call them off. I say send Rissa to go talk to them. Well, if Rissa knows the town, though, she might be able to help us scout out this prison. It's true. Uh, maybe we go back to their employer. We'll have Rissa meet us at the prison maybe later. She can she can call them off and we can head to the prison. Why don't we have okay. Ford and Jester go go tell their employers? Yeah, that sounds uh, great. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh. well, uh, maybe. Yeah, well, yeah. Uh, <laughs> which one are you? Are you yeah. Jester? Or are you? <laughs> I don't know anymore. <laughs> uh, who wants who wants the node? By the way. Oh yes. Well, let's find out if we need it. Yet. Yeah, let's let's hold on to it. Maybe there's going to be some sort of emergency situation. Fair. Um, Use note in case of emergency. Now that we have a bag. Uh, Jester, could we perhaps hold on to your backpack before you go so that we have that in case we need it? No, I'm going to hold on to this. Why would I give it to you? <laughs> well, I feel it is fairly obvious, but uh, okay, as you are. <laughs> I'm not going anywhere. Why would they give it to you? This is my bag. I paid for it. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so what are we doing now? I yeah. guess we're all going. <laughs> this is revenge Let's for fall. any time Matt hasn't, we haven't let Matt go on an NPC. <laughs> Sorry. Let's, let's, uh, let's go take a look at this prison. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Risa goes, all right, I can go ahead and lead you to it. Um, can't say I've been too close to it personally, so far. <laughs> um, follow me. And so Rissa guides you through the rest of the shelf back to the walkway that winds down the front of the mountain to the bottom half of the city of Hupperduk, 
Um, lower duck. <laughs> lower duck, if you will. Uh, <laughs> Wait, did our Ford and Jester are going to go call off the employers? No, they're, they're with us. They're okay. with you guys. Okay, okay, okay. This is Taylor Wise. Um, if you, you can go ahead that way if you want to, to call them off, unless you want to send them on their own wild goose chase. Those guys, they'll be fine. <laughs> I would just hate for them to find the kids and then do something to They're the kids. The, how would they find the kids? They're literally on a mission to find the kids right now. Hmm. Yeah, yes. we put a. I mean, we put Caleb's alarm across it, oh, but we still. Did. We did. Still, if they get across. Exactly. I don't know. Is the, I is could the, maybe send him a message? Oh yes, you have that spell, don't you? I do the kids. Do. Can to, you do it no, to the kids? To, to, to uh, Fitz and Ashton. Yeah, yeah. Let's do that. Let's do that. To Fitz. Okay. Man, that solves that problem. She kind of quietly sure tugs on the symbol of the of the traveler of a holy symbol and goes like, um, okay, Fitz. Um, this is the girl who was with the people that were making you angry. You oh, have like eight words left. <laughs> we found it so. Everything is good. Go back to work. I think that's all of it. <laughs> go back to work. <laughs> <laughs> Technically, go back to work can be one word if you say it fast enough. That's true. Yeah, that's a lot true. of that was hyphenated. <laughs> <laughs> the traveler is very forgiving. Grammar. <laughs> uh, Rissa leads you down this path to the Iron Lot, which is. Uh, uh, you're guided to the base of it. You've seen it as you approached, and there was the large uh, platform elevator that ri- that uh, rose up to the second layer. It's currently in, uh, not being used. It's locked on the upper floor. Um, and as you head into that area, you can see the smokestacks are billowing strongly. Business is in the process of being done full throttle in the uh, understanding that this coming conflict, or the, the, the now arrived conflict on the eastern side has put everyone into overdrive to prepare whatever sort of equipment or weaponry they can send that direction. And, and the stuff they're making is like catapults or guns? Uh, well, you can, from the outside, all that you can see is you haven't been inside any of the oh, uh, the warehouses. Because okay. um, there, there is the, the iron lot and there's the assembly yard. The assembly yard is the one that's the open space where they're building these large siege engines. You see uh, mobile carts that are either horse-drawn or powered by something you don't quite uh, understand yet yeah, we also that have saw, other large weapons attached to them. We saw bolt throwers, mm-hmm. those giant bolt throwers, um, like Lord of the Rings style, uh, siege towers, also kind of Lord of the Rings yeah, style, the Rings. Um, battering ram, like every fantasy movie style, but definitely Lord of the Rings, and then huge cannons. Not very Lord of the Rings. Pirates. Cool. That's what we saw last, or that's what I think I saw. When I, we did like a perception check or something. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then so. there's like a big factory that looks like an evil Willy Wonka factory kind of thing. Uh-huh. Yes. All right. So as you are being led down, Riss is pointing out some elements of it. She goes, Okay, so over that side is the Omni Smelter, and you can see she points over to what looks like a cluster of a dozen or so warehouses that are all kind of scattered in a spiderweb-like formation that are connected by a series of hallways between each other and then towards a central piece. She goes, uh, that there is where uh, most of the foundries of the city lie, um, where all the various uh, mined ingots or those imported are melted down and uh, utilized. Um, the foreman there is a bit of a tool. <laughs> There's the, uh, there's the Arma Vault, and she points to the far northern side of the mountain base, and you see what looks to be a 25, 30 foot tall by 60 foot across iron door that is solid and jammed into the side of this mountain. It looks like it's very well protected from this glance at the distance from what you can see. There's maybe uh, two dozen or so crowns guard that are stationed at its base. Uh, that there is, um, that's where most of the Funds that are saved for the uses of the city maintain, mm. uh, as well as a number of the not currently being used devices of war, means of defending the city should it come under attack, if you will. Um, points over there, you can see what looks to be uh, where most of this smoke and steam is rising from. There is this one large, uh, almost like a two-story black tower that is just a single column of fast-moving just smoke pouring out of it, and you can see areas where the the smoke seems to be pulsing almost, or, or darkening and widening at certain places. Uh, that there's the underbellows. That's where um, 
They utilize uh, a number of the forges and furnaces for the factories here. They've harnessed some of the volcanic activity beneath the mountain, and that kind of uh, maintains a sort of uh, consistent uh, heat for the forges. Smells downright awful, to be honest. Um, over there's the Firemark facility, and she points over to uh, a building that looks a little simpler. It's not super tall and ominous looking. It's very plain, uh, made of uh, uh, kind of cheap metals. Uh, more, you notice all the all the buildings here are mostly metal, probably because there's a lot of dealing with heat, fire, uh, sparks, and the last thing they need is any of these things to catch fire. Um, she points though to the Firemark facility. She goes, uh, "This is where we're they're developing a majority of that." Um, uh, you know, certain explosive and black powder-based technologies. What's that place called again? It's called the Firemark Facility. Firemark. Is it heavily protected? Oh, <laughs> most everything is here. And then right over there, and she points to the southern side of the mountain base of the Iron Lot, uh, to a smaller doorway, similar in, in shape and construction as to the Arma Vault, but it's a little more localized, maybe about 15 foot high and about 20 foot wide. That is the Gearhold Prison. Mm. The one you were asking about. The one where my uh, my father done fucked up. <laughs> what do you know about that machine he built anyway? It's a, uh, have you ever seen in, 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 in Automaton, uh, whether they're made of stone or made of uh, clay? Come across a couple. Uh, imagine one that's made of metal and gears and blades, lots blades. of blades. What? Blades? Blades. Um, oh, God. Vampire hunters. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> it is covered in daywalkers, yes. Um, do the blades, like, spin? They do. Uh, the whole thing spins, do actually. It doesn't shot? have feet. It just rolls and cuts. Basically. Oh, my God. And it is animated by uh, a magical means? Uh, partially magical and partially a clockwork. Is there, like, is there, like, is it, like, Steam powered? Is it, or is it, is it, is it? The power source is magical, but most of its actual locomotion is done done through uh, through uh, clockwork and various internal gears. It's actually quite a marvel to behold. It's well, just it's, a, it's a magical power source, then. As, as far as I know, so, it's not my mastery. It's my daft father's. So where's the source? So uh, it's, it's inside of it, I would assume. Right? Some sort of source of combustion, maybe. Um, what did I your father call this robot? Um, he referred to it as the, the Gear Keeper. The Gear Keeper. It was designed to be one of the uh, threatening wardens to, to help quell any sort of breakouts of the prison and meant as, a, as an intimidation device for those who attempted to rise up against their captors uh, and possibly be its first initial run to be a, a defensive sentinel for the city. I mean, if these things work properly, having five or six of them just mm -hmm. Rapidly on the outskirts of the city would probably keep anyone from trying to break in here or make any sort of, uh, you know, lawless act in its boundaries. Um, unfortunately, uh, they've only made one, and it went crazy and killed a bunch of people. So yeah. there's that. Doesn't sound like a city I'd want to live in. Yeah, that's why we're trying to fix it. <sighs> and they just let it. They sort of like cornered it to a, into it. They sealed it off. They've been trying to get back to it, but there's a lot of distraction, and honestly, it's kind of out of sight, out of mind. I think. Honestly, we could just show up and say we've been hired to try and take care of it and go in and. Would anyone believe that? We're, we, we technically have been hired to, to go in and take care of it. We were just working in trade. City. No, they know not by the city. It's by a private contractor. I am sorry, I don't understand. You say you know they're too busy to deal with it. Have they got it locked away in a vault while it just stomps around? Or? As far as I know, yeah. There's a. Uh, they had originally had it placed on the bottom floor in one section, which had more of the uh, very violent criminals, and um, killed a bunch of them. Not too bad. Killed a bunch of guards. That's pretty bad. And at the time, they didn't have the manpower to fight it off, so they sealed the doors and uh, haven't had a problem since. So was anyone else left in there with it that it if maybe didn't kill or? Been there for quite anything. some time, uh, a couple years at least, I think, two or three years. So if anyone was, they've expired, I'm pretty sure. Sorry. That's fine by me. 
Hmm. I think we're going to have to do a little more research, but I'm feeling pretty good about our prospects. Yeah. Well, the, the, the main concern is just getting in the prison. I don't know if walking up to the front door and saying, hi, we're here to take care of your spinny death problem is going to work. We heard, you, we heard you have a bug problem, we're here to take care of it? Do we need that outfits like what he or said, something? But... I mean, I, I suggest that we wear shoes and pants, but you know. <laughs> but like Orkin Man outfits, or like, do we need to look like we're Can official? I do a form of some sort. We could have a letter from your father, perhaps. Can we go get suits? But they don't like her father. Yeah, but they'd be perfectly happy if we. we we're going in knowing full well what we're getting into. There's no harm, no foul there. Awesome black yeah, suits. Yeah, and they certainly have nothing to lose. We are a, a group of people claiming we have to deal with their issue. We either die doing it or solve their problem. Heist yeah. type maintenance workers' uniforms? You're, okay, you really want to break yeah. into a prison. I just want to wear a onesie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I kind of want something. I feel like we can make that dream come true. <laughs> something with a big lapel, maybe double breasted. Sounds great. Just, we would look so handsome, you just guys. Just leans into Risa. It's like, um, Risa, do you have any examples of your father's writing? Because I can copy it pretty well. Oh. That sounds like Gorgeous. something that's way too smart for Laura to say. <laughs> oh. <laughs> You're so lucky she's not watching right now. <laughs> she, she probably, she'll she's be probably watching. Probably watching. <laughs> she's probably watching. <laughs> we also, I would love to see if there's any sort of sketch or blueprint of this of this thing that we could just take a look at first and maybe have a thought of our plan of attack. I can guarantee you they're not going to have any publicly available blueprints of a prison. No, I mean of the, of of the, machine. the machine. Oh. Would your dad? We can certainly ask. <clears throat> Just to sort of see what we're getting into. You see that, that spark in her eye of a good idea, and then thinking about having to go back to her father. She's like, "We can, yeah. we can go on our own if you like." No, I will no be it's great. fine. It's fine. I'll, I'll go. I'm used to him. It's okay. Does Does your dad like pastries? Does he have a sweet tooth? Well, I imagine he does. He's. I've seen him eat a few. Does he like pies? Probably. Let's pick up your dad a pie on the way home. <laughs> okay. People like pies, right? I love them. I mean, People I like pies, pies, but I'm, I'm a bad example yeah. of so I really many things. Like meat pies. The meat pies. Yeah. Would your dad like a meat pie? Yeah, meat pie. I just hear people bring pies. Yeah. Ford kind of leans in and is like, "That's good. That's good, Jester." Thank you, <laughs> Bo. But that's okay. Sorry. It's been yeah. a long, emotional day. It has been. <laughs> Hasn't it, Ford? Um, too many. Too much in my head right now, guys. It's been a long day. Playing five characters at the same time. That's fine. <laughs> this brings fine. me back <laughs> to some home games. Thanks, Baby Willingham. <laughs> so oh much. man, so much. It's been the longest it's day. Been the longest it's day. Like um, sorry. <laughs> we stop and get a meat pie on the way. All right. Easy enough as you're wandering through the street. <laughs> Um, following the, the, the scents of food that are being cooked in, in advance of the current lunch hour happening, you hear a few whistles go off in the distance, and in that moment, uh, Rissa goes, you know, we best be hurrying before the rush hits, and you pick up a pace as the, hear, you start hearing the the different steam whistles go off, and you watch a lot of the buildings begin to just swarm out with all their workers on their brief lunch break. Um, you manage to stay ahead of most of the wave, making their way up to the top uh, shelf of the city, eventually coming to one of the, the vendors on the outside who is swarmed by about 12 or 13 different gnomes. Uh, you wait patiently for about a good 15, 20 minutes or so as they prepare and get all their meats, uh, their meat pies ready, sweet pies ready, uh, sell a few things, a couple of their regulars kind of cut in line in front of you, not paying much attention or caring that you're waiting patiently. Um, but there is a large crowd behind you, and you manage to get to the front, and the, uh, uh, the two gnomes that are currently in the process of digging this up kind of look at the rest of you and go, oh, yo, you're, you're, uh, you're an right, interesting team. Uh, what brings you here? You're looking for pies? We got pies, we want pies? We'd like yes, a hospitable nice. meat pie. <laughs> Single? Oh. It's not enough to go around, I can tell you. Well, we might need a, We'll get one, a one for us, one for him. Yeah. Two meat pies, sorry, three meat pies. All right. Turns around and pulls out three three gnome-sized meat pies, which are about oh. that big. Oh. <laughs> Can we make that a double? Six gnomish meat pies. Thank Passes you. Passes them over. We have money again, don't we? Yes, yes we, we have, have our money, money back. I, I throw down for the pies. Okay, it's it's. We'll say for the total of that, it's maybe a silver. Okay. Um, when the whistles blew, Matthew. Did we see any guards shift do a shift change at the prison? Uh, because you're rushing to get the pies, make a perception check with disadvantage at this distance. 
Seven. Seven. You have idea. no idea. Yeah, no, it was. That's a good. That's a good thought. Oh, that's good. Mm-hmm. Um, you have your meat pies. You want to make your way over back to the uh, the, the Tinker Top uh, <laughs> sentence there. The um, I pass out meat pies to anyone who wants one, but save one. All right, so you have one ready. You guys kind of snack as you walk along. Um, interesting point uh, of of noticing as you guys come by, you do see. A familiar sight for you, and uh, for those who've been in the, the Empire for a bit, you're familiar with this as well. Uh, Not and Caleb, oh. you see a crew. It's two Crowns Guard that are flanking one figure. You see wearing a black cloak with gold trim that goes just past the shoulders. It's almost a, a, a like a shawl or a um, uh, brain escapes the term, uh, but it's like it's like a, a short cloak. Okay. Um, these are the Tithe Collectors. Oh yes. Tax man. Uh, they're referred to colloquially as reapers behind their back, um, but you see them exiting one home and moving on to the next door and knocking. Are they heading towards the butcher? Uh, ways away, but they're present. It seems that the, the time of year has come. The, the every six month window seems to be mm. coming, so, or has arrived. Nevertheless, you travel with meat pie in hand, eventually making your way back to Tinker Top Inventions. The door is still partially ajar. Uh, you see the, the faint light of the two lanterns in the back as you enter, and there in the back you see in the process of currently sketching something down, your good friend, master maker, Clef Tinkertop. <laughs> oh, you've returned. Sounded great, 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 good to see you. What, uh, do, we brought what gifts. Help you with? Gift, we've brought gift. Oh, that's so kind. Thank you so much. It was Rissa's idea. Rissa, for your own pups, did you? She's like, oh, well, it was sort of a group decision. I hope you like it, Dad. She's like, <laughs> it's cold, but tasty. So anyway. And he kind of takes it and he starts Fine, eating it. He just had a joke that he had to tell him. Yeah. <laughs> kind, of, kind of stuffing it in chunks through his, his, his gnomish maw. Um, getting getting <laughs> good bits of the gravy kind of dripping off the chin. Uh, we're we're going to take a stab at this death machine. We were curious if you could... Uh, <laughs> That's just what we're calling it. Uh, it's, it's really, I, I like the description. It's mini death machine. Is it, if there's any information you can give us about the machine, just so that we're not going in cold, like uh, if, if you know that it has any vulnerabilities oh, to anything. Plenty, plenty. I brought the thing myself, don't worry. If you could worry. sketch it for us so we can get a sense of, of Oh, where I've already got are. it. Don't worry, dear friend. I'll be right back. <laughs> never coming Turns back around again. and kind of disappears behind what looks to be a... I could steal the, uh, the crossbow and we don't have to do the mission at all. Please don't tell me that you're going to do that. <laughs> I could. Just saying. So you hear, you hear some rustling and some things falling over, a couple of banging noises, and you hear a... Damn it. But you know, being as the man's daughter is uh, standing here with us, perhaps we will pass on that idea. Yeah, I can hear you, just so you're aware. I'm um, right next to you, little one. <laughs> she's clever. <laughs> no, she just has hearing. No, she's a wily one. <laughs> <laughs> a moment later, uh, Kalef returns, clutching an armful of rolled pieces of paper and prints and parchment, and goes, Here's about everything I've got on the things. All right. Throws it down in front of you, some of it unroll. You can see there's various stages of design. You can see uh, the breakdown of the mechanics in the interior of this. It's extremely intricate and very, very impressive clockwork. Um, go ahead and roll an intelligence okay, check. I'm not going to be able to make heads or tails of any of this shit. I, I was actually going to ask questions about it as well. Yeah. Okay, look, you are the one who is the most uh, proficient with uh, understanding systems. Uh, if you could make yeah. an intelligence check for me as well, both right. you and Molly. Sure. Since Molly was the first to, to grab them. Oh, uh, natural one. Oh, nosies. He's just, he's just eating that, Eight. that extra meat pie. All right, you both take a moment and look over it. One, it's all written in Gnomish. Do either of you guys uh, understand Gnomish no. as a language? Does uh, anybody understand Gnomish? No. Secondly, a lot of the a lot of the um, blueprints are in shorthand, uh, and the uh, 
the design work, while it's very beautiful to see, the, uh, the, the actual sketching of each stage of its construction and the interior mechanisms about it are very beautiful, it is very intricate. Um, paying attention to it, looking it over, the best you can ascertain is there is a there is a core. There is some sort of a device that powers it. Um, through this, the the notes around it, you can see it's supposed to power for about two hundred years before it needs replacing. Oh, um, cool. just wait it out. It's a good, good half life. <laughs> Um, however, around it is layer after layer after layer of what looks like a metallic iron rings that are uh, joined at certain hinge points so they can kind of spin and, and shift in the inside like a gyroscope. So it's very uh, hard to get a spell in there. Yes. Uh, it's not impossible if you pull enough of the armor away, which is the next stage, the, the layers of armor. There's three different uh, layers of articulated armor that can shift and move because on the inside you can see there are about a dozen bladed arms that at any given point in time can fold out of the armor and strike like small scythes or sickles and then retract inside. Whoa. You are fucking crazy, Clef. <laughs> That's certainly not the first time I've heard that. <laughs> oh. yeah, so, Herr Tinkertop, uh, once we are to get past these defenses, uh, uh, would uh, dispelling uh, its arcane nature shut the machine down? I mean, that's that's possible. Uh, oh, curses! Uh, I should have, I should have thought of some way of a failsafe to prevent that from happening. Well, next design, next design. It'll be, it'll be dispel-proof. Thank you for that. You're, you're but good. The, the nutshell protecting that core needs to be defeated first. Uh, I imagine to a certain extent there is there is a base level of, of insulation from uh, impactful or uh, various magical uh, uh, intrusions that could affect the core. That I did think of, um, but there's only really one. I should have put three. So we start pulling plates off. He starts making notes. Start cutting our work. way through one specific spot. We could eventually get to a point where you could get some spells in there. Or maybe Yasha could hit it with her sword. You may have to tank this. I, I that the same. I will, I will certainly try. This does seem I mean, like yeah, a very is there, is there a front and back to this thing, or is it just a whirling dervish? dervish. Uh, the front and back dervish. is... Uh, <laughs> dervish. Uh, <laughs> that's a great pirate word, dervish. Um, the, uh, he, he looks to you and goes, well, there is kind of, um, and he goes through one of the papers and pulls it open, and you can see there, is, there are plates of the armor, certain plates that kind of fold up, from the inside, like they kind of open, and there's a small lens, uh, like mm -hmm. a crystal type lens that is that recesses on the inside of it when it's moving, and then seems to push out from it to see. Okay. The question: um, Can it climb? Um, depending on the terrain, probably. Um, it does. It, I, I mean, if it's you know, <clears throat> flat wall surfaces, it's not designed for climbing, it's designed for intimidation and slaughtering. Um, perhaps my design is a bit unfocused for the reason they asked me to build it, but ah, next time. Climbing? I don't know. Probably not. And does it have any capabilities of attacking at range? As far as I know, no, but it moves very fast. And these lenses, I'm assuming, uh, regular lenses, I don't know. They can still be blinded, right? Maybe. They're made of a, a very thick crystalline substance. It uh, uh, had to be imported from up north, from uh, the remnants of one of the old elven uh, societies there that specialized in making this strong crystal. Mm -hmm. Sounds very super expensive. cheap and easy to break. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Imported, great. Imports. It can be. <laughs> It could be. It could possibly be binded by by obscuring the lens. Maybe. So I say it can still be blinded. It's still just a lens. So it's right now more notes. Make and sure lens can't be obscured in future design. <laughs> uh, Clef, did you when you were building this thing, you were building it off site, I assume, right? No, I built it here. No, I mean off off the prison site. Not oh, right, right. So you don't know any extra secret entrances or exits to the prison itself. No, unfortunately, they keep us away from all that, you know, for security reasons. Okay. So I couldn't help people break in or out, like, like now. Like now, yeah, yeah, that would have been very helpful. Sorry. And would it be foolish to have you speak on our behalf to usher us in? Um, I don't think they're gonna let me in. 
not you in per se, but if, if we show up as representatives here to dismantle the, the machine. Yes, you are finally ready to make amends, et cetera, et cetera. And you hired uh, us to go in and do some work. Maybe. All right. Looks through Drissa. Drissa, would you mind bringing your old pups with you? And she's like, only to the door, Dad, and you can come back. And she kind of glance, glares over the two of you. If that's necessary. If whatever works. Fine, come along, Dan. We'll close it behind. Get your keys. Oh, I haven't been out on like a, a proper walk with friends in some time. I'm so excited. <laughs> Should get some honey or something. I bet some honey on the lens would be a real pain in the ass. He takes the last sure. bit of his meat pie and kind of like shoves honey. his mouth real fast. Do you have any honey? We'll see if we pick up. I something. have honey. Of course you do. Yeah. <laughs> If only we had a some Why sort not of something heist. Something darker, yeah. <laughs> you know, like <clears throat> ash, charcoal, Bless. black powder. Uh, I have, I have that as well. Uh, sorry. Uh, what do you have? I and I have molasses. Oh, <gasps> hey, look at that. that is so darker. That, uh, yeah. <laughs> Why do you have molasses? I'm suddenly. This is suddenly very exciting. Um, you know, I will tell you that uh, in a few minutes, actually. If that's all right. Just goes, this entire time you've been holding out on delicious molasses? <laughs> I mean, it's industrial grade, it is not for baking. <laughs> Are you sure? I'm quite sure. <laughs> Did I stutter? Was this why your skin is so smooth? You've just been like giving yourself a facial every night. It's just. Like, what's the difference yeah. between baking and industrial grade? <laughs> That is a good question, Yasha. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't cook with it. I use it for um, uh, arcane things. Yeah. Magic molasses. Actually, this, no, this brings up a, how much molasses do you have? Yeah, how much you carry? That's <laughs> so, uh, so weird. It's so abrasive you know, sometimes. Maybe I have about the amount of a plum. We may need that's, in. Enough, that's enough to smear a lens. I was thinking if we had a, if we had like a, a, a small glass jar of it, we could give it a throw. Uh, I was gonna say is uh, you could also put a meat pie in the. Oh, yeah. I, I could mean, put a meat pie on the end of one of my bolts though. and shoot it at it. I feel like pie chucker. I feel like molasses <laughs> would gum up something that's clockwork. Could it could right? It could help. It depends on so how strong the, the clockwork is. Or just is. like tar, or something. Yeah, something sticky. Yeah. Bubble gum. Big that would be even better if we could. Maybe on the walk, we can see if we can find a tar, a tar yeah. restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Riz goes, uh, I mean, tar is not uncommonly used in some of the industrial districts down in the Iron Lot. And we do have some friends over there that we just sent their, their, their young interns away on a... Well, the Forge Mast, the Forge Mast, they're mainly metal work. As far as tar use, that's going to be down in the Iron Lot, and that's going to be... Um, I mean, you're kind of on your own there. I mean, how do we transport it? In a Very bucket? Gentle bucket or pot? Heated tar in a it bucket? It doesn't have to be hot, it just has to be a... It has to be a little hot. It has to be a little hot. <laughs> oh, yeah, it gets hard. Poor yeah, Lord goes, if only we knew someone around here was pretty decent with fire. Hey, you could heat up a bucket of tar as we walk <laughs> into a prison. That wouldn't that be a... suspicious at all. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, we will probably down, wait on that once we part. Get down. Yeah. Yeah, once that we is get a good down, idea for. Not, not right away. Also, Ford, uh, congratulations on this, your most auspicious day. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, thank you. I, I appreciate you being so forthright and appreciative, Kayla. <laughs> yeah. Get your sleep while you can. And don't uh, use the exercise ball to rock him to sleep because then they get addicted to it. And that's it, of your sleep life yourself. I have no idea what the hell you're talking about. <laughs> Did you babysit a lot as a kid, Caleb? Oh, Is no. This how you know There's so much? There's so many walls being broken. Like fourth wall, fifth wall, yeah. sixth wall. It's too deep. Yeah, just a no compliment walls. on the You just broke the Travis. prismatic wall. Yeah. <laughs> I don't need to mention now. This is getting a little, little heavy. Thank you, Mom. <laughs> <laughs> just oh, took a thing 
thank you for not his baby being born. Worst night ever. Can I can I remove that? No. Take it off. I'm committed. No. I feel like at break time last last time it came off. Yeah. You made it to break, I think. I have. Let's all just pretend like it's the worst night. Two spares. No. 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 Don't do this to yourself. At this point, as you guys are having this awkward conversations, uh, uh, Clef is rushing around, grabbing like a coat and grabbing some other things, and like filling his inside of his, his apron with various tools and utensils. Like, oh, I can probably use that. Um, uh, uh, all right, I think I'm. I think I'm ready to come with you. Let's go. And you all step outside, and uh, you get about thirty or so feet from before uh, you see Clef kind of like his pace slow. Um, he takes another step and keeps looking around. When was the last time you left your house, Clef? Uh, it's been a while. It's sort of a, oh, starting to get a little warm. Um, and Rissa's like, uh, he's um, kind of a, what's the term? Agoraphobic. Agoraphobic, if you will. He's uh, a bit iffy on the outside. Are you sure you're all right, Dad? You can still stay. No, no, it's fine. I want to go with my friends here. <laughs> Do you need a drink to uh, soothe your nerves? Oh, I don't. I've, I've never had a drink. I don't, I don't need a drink. But they would, it would really help. I pull it. Uh, how about, so how about just a huddle up? Huddle up. Huddle up. Let's just, you know, let's take just it. Just us? No, we just can. We can. We can. We can. We can uh, put them in the center. Huddle around them. Okay. Yeah. Okay. We I prefer a yeah. protective. You all kind of like get really close to me. He's like, oh, oh, this is really warm. <laughs> It's that's, that's a lot of attention. No, 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 not that close. We're making a um, a safety bubble. Oh, all right. I mean, uh, it could be warm. It's pretty. It's this pretty is warm. this is silly. Uh, I take off the cloak that I've been wearing for a week or so now, and I uh, just put it over the man's head. <laughs> no. Oh, oh, sorry. Good thought. In a comforting way. In a comforting way. Smothering way. Smothering way. He takes it and kind of pulls it over his head and goes like. Object permanence. <laughs> All right. Um, and he. Let's go. <laughs> and he's like, one, set, two, step. He's basically like Bill Murray and What About Bob at this point. He's like just oh, concentrating yes. on each step he makes. Going forward, it's slowing you down a little bit, but he's making it forward. And Riss is like, oh. <laughs> uh, but you eventually make your way further so and further. You walk up to the guards and say, "We're here to dismantle the robot." We right? are. Uh, we are professional robot dismantlers. All right, yeah. let's do it. Who's going to be doing the talking? Well, we're going to stop and pick up some tar on the way there, and yeah. Okay. Um, I nominate the human to talk. Uh, I can't nominate Ford. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no. If I think Ford would, Ford would agree with that. <laughs> Do you believe in me, Ford? You know, if I've learned anything, is that you are full of surprises. So, by all means. All right, tar first. Tar first. Where do we go for tar? The iron lot? Uh, Ris Riskin looks. Iron lots, most likely. Um, I'll keep an eye out. Follow me. Mm -hmm. She leads you guys down the switchback path once more down to the iron lot uh, on the bottom shelf of the city. There, upon keeping an eye out, uh, Riss is looking at back and forth uh, on the outskirts of the uh, the Firemark facility. She's like, "No, I don't think they're going to do much as far as tar goes. Honestly, a lot of it's probably based somewhere in the." Uh, <laughs> Probably in the assembly yard. That's oh. where they're making the bigger constructs and having to piece together wood exteriors. Ah, no, it's on the, it's on the northern side of the, okay. the bottom shelf. Okay. Um, she leads you guys over to the outskirts, and there's a big fence that kind of wraps around the assembly yard, where you can see a lot of these uh, kind of thin, standing skeletal towers of metal are placed against mm -hmm. some constructs that are in partial. Uh, levels of construction. Others are empty and not currently in use. Other ones seem to have been near completion, and they're in the process of uh, preparing and breaking down the various siege engine for transport to the east. Um, who's keeping an eye out to see if there's anything that could be used like tar? Who's who's looking for this? I'll look for that. All right, let's go ahead and make a perception check, please. 18. 18. Not too bad. You take about five minutes or, go, or, five minutes or so to case the vicinity, and kind of looking between the gates, you can see uh, two towers over, there is one 
partially constructed wide bolt thrower cart that only has one that's currently bolted to it. You see that they're taking leather elements and tarring them around the edges to uh, prevent any sort of impacts from splintering the wood that's carrying it. Uh, it looks like from there they go, they go with like a leather case and then put metal over that and bolt it down. Um, but in the process, they do have what looks to be a couple of small pails that have some thick black tar-like substance that they're kind of wow, putting around the edges. Yeah. So, and we're behind a gate. You are behind. And there's the workers gate. everywhere. Uh, there's probably within current view of the open portion of this side of the assembly yard, about twenty or so workers that are in the middle of focusing on their work at hand. But it's an open space with maybe twenty to thirty feet be open between each project tower. So it's it's pretty open. You have to be creative. This is at the assembly yard. Correct. I take my staff well, out. Okay. And I go. Across the gate. Ah, why would you? No! <laughs> As you do so, cross it, uh, Rizzo kind of goes like, Achuk! and you look on the nearby tower, maybe about 25, 30 feet ahead to the north of you. Uh, one of the gnomes at the top of the tower is currently hammering away at one of the large constructs, kind of like a siege tower like structure, looks over, pulls the goggles up. Hello? What? Good money or trade for some supplies? Piss off! Puts the goggles down. Tink, 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 tink. We could just walk in and pretend to be a, a worker and just grab a bucket. I thought we were behind a gate. We were like locked just off. Sneak in the gate. I just sneak in. I have an idea. Mm. Oh. Yes. Uh, I could uh, summon Schmidt, and it would be a slow process, but uh, he could carry it, you know, a couple of inches low to the ground and wait. And then go, you know, a couple of feet yes, and then wait. Yes. What's his range? Oh, uh, let's see. How far is it, Matt? Uh, the nearest, the the one, the the one little part of the yard that they're currently using this material is about sixty feet away from you. Oh, that's not bad. Like sixty to seventy from your immediate guessing oh. glance. I, it is about that distance. Okay. <clears throat> so it might be just shy or. Let's give it a whirl. Uh, just give me uh, ten-ish minutes. Ten minutes? Oh, okay. <laughs> That's not bad. I pull a book out of my holster and flip to the right page and start muttering. Uh, does anyone want to do anything in those nine minutes left? Um, I'll walk around and just see if there's a way through the gate that's that's uh, hidden. Make an investigation check. <clears throat> I'll keep an eye on the guard. On the not on the guard. I'll keep an eye on the worker. Ten. Ten. You take the 10 minutes to look through, but this part of the gate is pretty solidly locked in. It's about six and a half, seven feet tall, um, and it's just like metal bars with almost like a, a, a kind of cross lattice of even thinner metal strips that are about maybe a quarter inch thick. Um, the openings are about that big, so you can still see through like portholes, but it's not quite large enough for most of you to slip through. You might be able to if you're careful and squeeze, since you're small enough. Uh, and they're mainly gnomes working this? Gnomes, and you see a handful of dwarves, but the dwarves seem to be mostly uh, doing oversight, supervision. Okay. So yeah, I, I like it's a plan B, you disguising yourself as a gnome worker. Okay. Well, let's see if Schmidt can do it first. Can do it first. So you complete your, uh, your spell ritual, you summon your, your uh, unseen servant, yeah, uh, Schmidt, one second. You two circus people. Yeah. Uh, Molly Mark. Yeah, yeah. Um, could, uh, oh, that's cute. Um, mm -hmm. Could the two of you uh, do something fabulous over there? Make a distraction? Yeah. yeah Juggle something? Uh, yeah, I could, uh, we could, y y I could, you know, have you stand on my shoulders? We could do that thing. Do you remember the vaulty thing? Oh, I remember the, the vaulting thing. thing. All right, you're gonna do the thing. I'm gonna do the vault it up. All right. Okay. Ready? <laughs> yeah, at which point is yours? Clef goes like, "Oh, we're gonna see a performance." Yeah. Get ready. I preemptively send Schmidt over to the closest bucket. Okay, and the range on that is uh, cannot get sixty feet. Cannot get more than sixty feet from you, right? Yeah, that's correct. Okay. So, what are the two of you doing? If you get near, if you get near the fence, I'm gonna try and jump on top of the fence. 
Oh, great. All right, but I don't need the fucking okay. number. Ready? Huh? Wait, yep. wait, you're going to jump the fence? Go no, wait, this is a no. distraction. You're not supposed to jump in. I'm going to jump on top of the fence. Oh, God. <laughs> Are you going to go in? Or you're no, just gonna... I'm just going to. The with razzle the, dazzle? Yeah, with a little oh, razzle, razzle dazzle. Okay, ready. All right. So, first oh, here's a question. I'm sorry. Yes. Oh, how uh, wide apart is it? Bars the fence? What kind of fence? Uh, are no, we there, there are large metal poles uh, incrementally about every 12 or so feet. Uh, in between them, it looks like there are cross lattices of uh, like an like inch wide and about a quarter inch thick metal bars that kind of weave across and form the fence. So that bucket's not going between any of that. Probably not. Uh, not, uh, would you be able to use your uh, visible hand to when, lift that up and over? When Schmidt comes close enough, yes. Okay. Mm. All right, you guys are prepared? Yep. So I would like you uh, to go ahead and make an acrobatics check with, uh, with advantage because you're being aided by Asha. Okay. I'll keep watch. Oof. Oh. Wow. 10. Wow. 10. As you reach down, grabbing the foot of Molly Mock with one big, you lift him, he tosses in the air gracefully, arms out, almost like a reverse swan dive into the air. You land and land legs open. You manage to miss the vital areas, but it definitely racks the inside of the thigh a little bit in a painful landing. Can I try and push up into a handstand and? You managed to do so, but it it lacks the presentational and grace element of it, so go ahead and make a performance check, but with disadvantage from the impact. So when he crashes, right at that moment, I ask Schmidt to move the bucket three feet closer to us. Okay. Low to the ground. (sighs) All right. Can I I aid him? Okay. Yeah. Uh, Natural 20. Oh, Oh, no, no, disadvantage. Yes. Uh, 15. 15, okay. Still pretty good. So in spite of the impact, you slowly stagger back up to the top, balance yourself up and flipping back up, and I'm going to get the swords out, and I'm going to start slowly working on moving down the fence with both swords, doing a spin, and trying to actually get a little flip going, a okay. little acrobatic. Oh boy, another 10 feet towards me. All right. I'll need you spotting, because I'm not great at I'm, this. I'm watching. All right, so this is happening. You're, you're, you're turning it around. It's starting to work in your, in, to your advantage. As this is happening, Schmidt is slowly dragging on its own. The Unseen Servant is dragging this this bucket three feet at a time. I'm keeping watch for any workers who might be noticing the bucket. Uh, none seem to be noticing the bucket at the moment, but you do see about three or four that are looking over at this very colorful, flashy, performing, nearly racked uh, tiefling who is in the process of juggling swords in the air and doing a series of, of Completely spontaneous performance art for no reason. Uh-huh. Um, Bravo! Bravo! You see two of the nearby workers start kind of looking over, confused, start talking to each other. You can kind of hear them muttering. One of them runs off to one of the supervisor dwarves who's about uh, 80 to 100 feet off to go tell him what's happening. He looks over, and eventually you hear, as Schmidt's getting closer and closer, the bucket of tar is maybe 20 feet from the, the fence line, and you hear a voice go, Hey, hey! What are you doing? Get down from there! Get I'm go jump on your get, shoulders get, now. Get. Okay. So I'm going to take a jump and try and land on the shoulders. Uh, straight acrobatics? Or? Straight acrobatics for this. All right. You go away. I'm trying you. Uh, that's a natural 20. Oh! <laughs> Laying right onto Yasha's shoulder. She catches you there, and you're still, from their perspective, you jumped off of the fence and then landed behind the fence and are. I'm just gonna kind of, do a little like side by side mm-hmm. walking to make it look like you. Sorry, you had a you had a great friend, uh, fence, and we're working on an act. <laughs> make a deception check. That's <laughs> not true. That's not true. How close does Mage Hand have to be? You could go now, but we can't go fast. They'll see a moving bucket. Yeah, we don't want it off the uh, ground. That's uh, nine. Nine. Okay. Uh, it's not that they don't buy it. They're just. More caught off guard by your presence, not listening to the words you're saying. Uh, the one supervisor keeps rushing forward and goes like, "Yeah, you know what? Dear, you don't have permission. Show me." Your... And at which point you see um, Clef kind of looking nervously, kind of steps forward and goes like, "Um, hello there, uh, Clef, no. Clef Tinkertop. Uh, no. we're, uh, we've all, we're all right. We're there, there with me." And the door kind of comes to a slow jog to a stop and goes, "Clef, what the fuck you doing down here?" Uh. The Schmidt drags the the bucket uh, oh, about never. 15 feet off to the side, and, and it, it is near the base of the. Okay, I'll cast the fence. Mage Hand. Okay. 
And is it, is our people looking right now? Yes, they are looking. Okay, but I mean, it's, it's about 15, 20 feet to the left. But they're they're currently focused on your group, which is gathered at the edge of the yard where they assemble all of their very we, powerful we, we, military we, we weapons. We should be at separate ends of the fence right now because I, I made my way down the fence with with Yasha a bit. So right, right. Short, so that was but... about about thirty feet. We'll say. Mm-hmm. Um. So are you attempting I'm to? I'm just going to wait until they finish no, their right. conversation. All right. I will try to edge it a little closer still. I'd like to get it near the fence if I can. It's actually right now, with that final scoot from Schmidt, it's right up against the fence on the opposite side. Mm-hmm. Okay, then I'm just going to wait for the right moment. Okay. And then I'll have Schmidt lift it over his head, but not yet. Okay. Uh, so at this point, the, the dwarf kind of rushes up to the edge and peers through and goes like, so, uh, Strange arrivals here. You got Clef and a couple of loonies just diving off the outside of our very well protected fence, but sure. Um, Clef, what's your business with these assholes? He's like, um, I, we're making our way to try and uh, make right some mistakes I've made, certainly, hopefully. And he kind of glances through with a bit of a Titan gaze and goes, All right, we'll just keep them off my fence. A lovely fence it is. Turns around, starts walking back to his post. Clef kind of starts, starts walking. We'll start I will, I'll, I'll nod to Caleb and try to do the lift over the fence. Okay. So, oh jeez, I go. Make a side of hand check to see if you can make the right timing and do so swift enough to where nobody seems to notice. Sleight of hand. Yes. Twenty-two. With Ooh. that, as soon as the dwarf turns around and all the rest of the workers go right back, like simultaneously, seeing that this this encounter is over, turn back to their work. And without a sound, rises over the fence <laughs> and is now at your disposal on the opposite end. Yeah. Uh, Something. <laughs> we have a bucket of tar. Star. <laughs> You're great. Part one That's of our plan is complete. Uh-huh. So you set them up and yeah. knock yeah. them down. Yeah, that was yeah. fun. Look at that I missed that. Yeah, that was good. Yeah, good. Yeah, yeah, everybody good. contributed yeah. a little, except for Jester and Ford. I mean, it was yeah, really they were a little good. Weak. When do they ever contribute, really? <laughs> I <don't>. know. <laughs> <laughs> goes, All right, that's the that's, that's first part of it. Um, what's next? To the prison. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, let's put the tar bucket in the in the haversack of holding, if if that's possible, if it will fit. Will it tip over? Uh, bag? She takes it and like slowly puts it inside. It's it'll fit in the larger one. So it slips inside the bag. She closes it. Okay. Are you sure it won't turn over? No. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, go back. Well, I don't want to ruin my bag. Yeah, we don't have to put it in. We'll I just carry it. Money for it. Well, well, I can carry it. it. It's we'll just carry it. We'll just carry it. Then we're carrying a bucket of oh, tar. Well, we're going into Kilaroa. That's all right, fine. All right, all right, all right. We'll just carry it. What else do you bring into a. What do they think they're going to do with a bucket of tar? Yeah, we're already pretty weird. Carefully, carefully hands it to Yasha. Let's lean into it. Yeah. Uh, at this point, uh, Rissa kind of continues pushing you now away from the assembly yard, back into the uh, the iron lot, and uh, towards the exterior of the gear hole prison. So there, on the outside of this doorway, you can see there's about a dozen crowns guard, mostly gnomish, uh, two human. Uh, looks like they're both. Currently decorated with a bit more detail, probably sent from the capital, or at least are uh, given a little more of, of import to the outside of this, this this guarding post. As you approach, you can see these large metal doors. There are there are two of them, and they they kind of open in the center. And there are a set of smaller doors built in the base of each of the sides. As you approach, some of the town's guard kind of look over curiously at this interesting wayward group making their way towards the outside. Uh, three of them begin to approach, and one of the humans. In the more intricate Crowns Guard uniform, approaches, kind of throwing the cloak over his shoulder, and you can see his hand resting on the handle of his now sheathed sword. Huh? Who goes there? What is your business? We are a contracted group of workers working for this man right here, Clef. We're here to take care of the problem that we heard you guys had with the Clockwork Warden. Uh, Clef kind of pulls the hood back a bit and was, "Hello." <laughs> Guy takes a moment and looks. Uh, make a persuasion check with advantage because yeah. Clef is helping you. Yeah. Thanks. Persuasive bow. Ooh, I stole this die that I got you from forever ago. Oh, yeah. It's got the little d20 inside of it. 
Okay, let's, I'll take the 12 uh, for the 13. <laughs> a 13, okay. Uh, the guard kind of steps back a bit, looks you over. All right, uh, hold tight a second. I'm going to go ahead and summon the warden. Just a moment. <clears throat> he steps through one of the small doors, <laughs> opens, and he disappears inside. How many uh, doors are there? I mean, there's the two large main doors, about uh, uh, like 15 feet tall, about 20 foot wide. And then there's smaller doors, like normal person size, almost gnomish size doors, built into it from that point. Um, you actually watch as the human town's guard, uh, crown's guard, has to like duck a little bit to go through the smaller door frame. He's gone for about five minutes or so, and then returns and says, uh, "The warden helm would wish to speak to you. Um, if you would mind stepping inside, and don't mind the escort. It's." Common business. What did you say the warden's name was? What's well, Wardenhelm Poppin uh, Druckrusher? Wardenhelm Poppin. Poppin Druckrusher. Druckrusher. Poppin Druckrusher. Poppin Druckrusher. I won't. I won't speak. I'm just not going to speak. And he was like, no mish names. Mm. I feel that. All right, at that point, you guys are led inside the dark interior, and as soon as you step into the shadow of the entryway of this prison, you go from the uh, the industrial and somewhat colorless uh, iron lot that you've been traveling through to this very low-lit, uh, kind of reddish, almost oxidized iron interior that is just shadow and torches. You can see these large, uh, almost support beams of metal put against the rock and stone that has been carved out of the interior of the mountain. And it's just one long hallway that splinters off into a number of hallways to the right and left before it reaches the outside of your current visual range to make any more detail out of it. Um, at this point, as you enter, you can see uh, about five more of the Crown's Guard follow behind uh, you and kind of keep you all as a small pack traveling. Um, at this point, uh, they, he begins to move forward and kind of gestures for you all to follow, saying, hmm. This way. Leads you down the hall, kind of scooting to the right and heads to the right of the very first branching hallway of the interior of the prison. Uh, heading further down, you can see there's a few doors that are open and on the inside they appear to be empty or there's a few other guards. Uh, on the interior, you don't see much in the way of, of Crown's guard. You see a different type of guard. Similar garb, but more drab, and you get the sense that there, this is a, an internal prison guard. This isn't part of the, the paid uh, you know, trained citywide guard. These are the interior Hupperduk uh, prison guards. No more than maybe another 40 or so feet down, there's a doorway that's open that leads into an office. Uh, on the inside of this office, uh, which itself is also super darkly lit, you see two almost ember torches that give this very dull red glow on the inside of the room. So it has this kind of somewhat ominous and dreary interior presence to it as you step into this chamber. Um, the desk is facing away from you, and there you see what looks to be an older and grizzled gnome who is in the process of wearing these uh, these series of, of, of robes and cloak over him with these uh, kind of gold-colored tassels and uh, epaulets that kind of shoot off the sides. It seems to be giving out an air of station and importance, even though it's just in the process of, of filing what looks to be either prison transfers or people that have been arrested and you know, figuring out who's to be put in here and what, or who's uh, business is going to come to an end soon. It's in the process of shuffling through papers before turning around to you and goes, All right, so you have come to my prison. Ooh. Stands up and turns around to you, kind of like clicking his feet together as he does so at attention, arms crossed. Hello? I'm uh, the Warden Helm Poppin. You have bothered me for my work, and I would like to know why. As, as you look at him, you can see uh, his hair has receded almost entirely to the back, and what bits of like clustered gray hair on the sides is currently attempted to slick and comb back, and one large part of it is trying to cover the massive bald spot, but as he spins around and, and talks to you, uh, with any sort of movement, it kind of wobbles and has to settle itself back into place. Oh, oh. For you, first I, off. I tap Bo on the back and uh. just make her bow a little bit. Uh, you don't have to, yeah, okay. <laughs> Respectful, I appreciate that. Pull her back so? up. Rissa has backed away to the doorway and is like, I doesn't want any part in this. Yeah, same, Rissa, same. <laughs> um, we will not take up much of your time. 
if you just let us in to go kill this clockwork warden that this guy made. We heard he was quite a problem. Just let us in, we'll be out of your hair, and you can get back to your work. And he looks over towards the, the, the cloaked gnome, which figure this side. What? Remember this guy? Kind of leans forward, and you can see uh, as as uh, the cloak is pulled back, Clef reveals his face. He goes, um, hello there. It's been a while. How you doing, Poppin? Interesting riffraff you bring into my home this day. Why do people keep calling us that? To be fair, we are. I was referring to Clef. Clef. Uh. Why do you come and bother me with my day's work? What do you want? You're, you're saying something about your uh, little mistake, your problem? Look, this guy is funding to take care of the spinning death machine that's in your guys' basement. This should be a city-funded issue, but this guy is being a good, noble citizen and funding it himself so we can come and make a quick buck and kill your death robot. Can we please just go kill your damn death robot? Looks to Clef, is this true? And uh, Clef can nod. Uh, actually, uh, yes. I know it's been a problem for a while, and uh, I figured by the time I cleaned up that mess myself, if you don't mind. The uh, Warden Helm kind of stops for a second and looks amongst the rest of you. Right, okay. You have what appears to be uh, an interesting crew of exterminators you've brought to me. Uh, what do you want from me? I assume you have come here for trade or for looking for some sort of recompense. I would like to know what that is before we move further into this. No one steps inside here wishing to do us, uh, how you say, um, charity work. Oh, of course. That makes perfect sense, and of, of course a man of your stature will be smart enough to know that such a thing is true. We, honestly, we will admit we may have a favor, a very minor favor to ask if everything goes well and we do in fact survive this encounter. In return, also, we will be gathering very valuable data on how to defeat these sort of automatons, which will be put into your possession and would definitely help you deliver something that could help with the war effort. This sort of data could get back to the people in charge and help them defeat machines in the future. We're hey. trying new techniques, new ways to defeat these sort of automatons. You look like a man who's willing to climb a ladder. I think you could go far. We'd be happy to help. War is a great time for opportunity, my friend. And we may discuss, uh, perhaps, if we can help. We have a cup. We have two friends who are currently in your system, and we would be more than happy to discuss a means of maybe resolving their issue with you. Not, not uh, innocence, but just coming to a conclusion that is mutually agreeable. Mm -hmm. Make a persuasion check with advantage, mm. with aiding from Bo, and a very persuasive argument, Man, actually. I love <laughs> bullshitting. High fives these from across the table. God, please, for once in your miserable life. Um, oh, man, eight. <laughs> oh, buddy. <laughs> Not life, just this campaign, tell us. I know. Listen. <laughs> Well, perhaps we can discuss, but I would like to see possibly this uh, deed you wish to do done first. I do not wish to talk contracts with those who are about to die, if you know what I'm saying. You would hardly waste your time. Who would? Very well. He looks past you to the, uh, the escort of guards that have followed you in. Lead them to the subterranean sealed chamber, allow them to uh, encounter our issue. Coming. And um, should they survive, return them to me with proof of the okay. deed. Should they not survive, we will not speak of this ever again. Good luck. I will be here waiting to hear of your uh, successful endeavor. Pardon? Now, lead me to my work. And he goes and sits back down in his chair. We're doing this now? Of course we are. Anyone want the node? Um, if I'm going to be throwing tar at this thing, maybe I should have yeah. it. Or Caleb, oh, well, who's, who's going to be throwing? Be throwing the tar? You with your mage hand, maybe? Yeah, I could. Caleb will heat it up. Caleb will heat it up, you'll throw it in, and then I'll be using some ice to try and cool the thing down once it's in there. And Yasha and I can try and pin it down, maybe yeah. corner it. And I, once we start, once it starts opening up the armor, I'll just, we'll just go to that one particular plate and start ripping, start ripping, this, that ripping the off. hole in. Mm -hmm. Okay. Chopping the plates off. Okay. Uh, let's uh, heat that tar up before entering. Mm, yes. yes, and well, let's you, get to the door. No, yeah, we'll get to the door, and set the node, set everything we need in, into action. 
Um. Uh, Clef and Rissa uh, kind of balk there as you were guys having this conversation. Rissa goes, uh, if it's not a problem, uh, I'll stay here with my dad and we'll just uh, we'll wait to hear what happens. We're, we're not much in the way of charging into the fray. You don't need to, <laughs> don't need to see Of this. course, you have task experts with, with this job. Of course, and, yeah. uh, and uh, uh, Clef kind of pushes past and goes, but before you go, I just want once more to uh, express my extreme gratitude for you putting yourself out there for my well-being. Oh, a tinker top never forgets these teats, and uh, uh, should you return safely, I will be in your debt. And he kind of bows, and the cloak kind of poof, under the ground, and he goes, oh, it picks it back up, and bows a little less this time. <laughs> Any last tips, Clef? Be careful. Yeah, it's what a good of, one. What kind of feet does it have again? <laughs> oh, it doesn't have feet. It rolls. Wonderful. Ball bearing? Hamster ball. I'll see. Ball bearing. We'll slow it down. I don't know. We'll find out. All right. Oh. All right, let's skin this cat. Uh, you guys currently have a a, a group of, of six uh, crowns yeah, guards from the outside and a, and a couple of prison guards take, that will lead you there. Take this and you'll be all right. Yeah. It's just swords. I get a good look at it, but yeah. this sounds like a fun challenge. Ford, you got a plan? Jester? Just goes, well, um, don't die, and if you fall over, I'll try to get you not uh, on the ground anymore. Uh, she can't. Does she want? She's like out of spells. <laughs> Wait, but aren't these? How is she out of spells? You guys took a, a Did long rest. Use a bunch. No, we took a long rest. rest. No, we she, used, she, she used two locate objects. I know that. Those are high level spells. It was second level, I think, isn't oh, it? Okay. Does it say how many spells she has left? Mm -hmm. Should. Yeah, look at object at second level. Here. To be fair, I think we were going to rest, and then we decided against it. We kind of just decided to go. <laughs> oh, it, it, re, it reset, but she definitely had used some. We know some, she used, but it's she's two used two second level spells. Locate objects. Okay. She has used two second level? Yeah, yes. we'll just okay. knock two out. So we'll mark those in there. If she had another, it's fine. Okay. okay. Um, she's not here to keep yeah. track. Yeah. Do, we, so do we want her to have anything precast? Let's see. Like, uh, like I don't think duplicity will matter, but yeah. like maybe a spiritual weapon already called up. Yeah, spiritual weapon is a good idea. Just have it, have it already. Let's let's. So it lasts for a minute. So. Oh, then let's wait. Then all right. No, in, let's just wait. I think it's. In case oh, this go, cares. this all goes, tits up. Do we want to try to talk to these guards and maybe figure out what cell the Schusters are in? You're welcome to try. I'd I'm not talking to them. I have, <laughs> but someone with more <laughs> charisma than me. Certainly not me. Ford's literally the only one that could charm him away. Charm a guard, That's unless we bribe that a guard. Is incorrect. Oh, <gasps> charming Caleb. <clears throat> I can speak some, when I have to. Do some suggestion stuff. I mean, is that worth no, doing just now? Talk. I mean, if we die, does it matter? No, but I mean, if the if the warden doesn't give us what we want, we after. can talk to the guards on the way up. Okay. Yeah, but we're in the prison. Yeah, let's. Let, we're going to be in the prison when we're done. All right. That's fair. Okay. <laughs> All right. So so the guard, assuming we live. <laughs> the guards have led you away from that uh, end of the chamber, down the hall, oh back to the main hallway that enters deeper into the Gearhole prison. Um, Following that down for another 80 or so feet, that main uh, open hallway comes to an end, and you can see there are a number of other small hallways that protrude. The guards lead you down the one on the left. You can see two immediately that branch off from the far end of that main open way. On that left side pathway, it leads to a set of stairs that spirals down to a second floor, then a third floor, then a fourth floor. The fourth floor is the bottom of these stairs, and you're now probably guessing from the time it's taking you to descend the spiral staircase, maybe an additional 100 to 120 feet below the entrance and the actual level base of the mountain. Uh, at this point, you continue down a hallway, and you can see now there are cells to your right and left as you enter this space. The cells are very well fortified, uh, and behind the bars, in the dark, dark, kind of red ember-like torchlight that faintly glows and alights elements of this hallway. As you continue down, you can see shapes, humanoid shapes, locked behind bars of all shapes and sizes. Uh, as you begin to pass one on the right, you watch as a figure kind of lurches up to the bars and <laughs> pushes up to the edge, and what faint bit of red light you can see illuminating a face that looks scarred by a large, heavy claw mark down one side, the eye kind of glued shut from the healing process. 
you can see this toothy, rotten grin underneath as a nasty smell of breath emanates from this heavy breathing, and as you pass by, it just says, Hey, how are you going to come back? Are you, are you going? Are you going? Come back! <laughs> you just kind of walk past. One of the guards takes their uh, their short sword and kind of clings it across the bed and goes, Keep back, keep back! Mr. Schuster, you look terrible! <laughs> I yell very loud to see if anybody responds to the name. To wait, what name? Mr. Schuster. Schuster? Okay, you listen, make a perception check. Yeah, sure. Oh! Uh, that's a 15. 15, okay, you listen out, and you hear a few voices chuckle, and some shifting of people that are now making their way to the front of the cell to see what this arriving group of strangers is, but nothing uh, out of the expected right. ordinary reacting to that name. A few other figures kind of push their way to the face, and you can see uh, men, women, you can see uh, you know, decrepit half elves that look uh, poorly nourished. You can see uh, humans that look like they've smeared themselves with their own foul excrement. You can Ooh. see just a whole nature of people that are in the process of dealing with being locked down here in the subterranean basement level of this prison. And then at the end, you come to what looks to be an iron door that is currently uh, sealed shut with what looks to be rung after rung after rung of chains pulled through across bars, locked with three padlocks. This is the door. The the main guard sitting there goes, oh, it is. He pulls out a ring of keys. When's the last time you opened it? Uh, when we sealed it. Which was? The, About a little over two years ago. And uh, okay. how big is this chamber in here? Uh, leads down, splits in the middle, and have two more sets of cells in the backside. Splits in the middle, two more sets of cells on the backside. So it looks like a big kind of fork. Does it have a common way? Or is this thing patrolling halls? I don't know. Before you And what in. will happen when we go inside here? Are you locking us in? Damn right. Till we knock on the door, I imagine. Until we. With that, one latch, and one lock comes free. Pulls it off, hands it to a guard. Oh, I'm going to look at the uh, second lock. Comes the free. dodecahedron. Yeah, we. Yeah. While okay. we're at it. So you go ahead and take a moment and concentrate on it. Should we heat up the tar? Let's heat up the tar. Yeah. Okay, Nods, Can you lift that thing up for me? Yeah, I can. Do lift. I, I'll, lift I'll, the... I'll hold it since you're doing the thing. Oh, sure. Yeah. Well, it's going to. Scold the bejesus out of your hands yeah. if I. Okay, I'll use beat. I'll use my hand to I'm, hold it up. I'm also I have immunity to flame, so or not quite immunity, but I don't really mind flame. Uh, well, I, I could semi burn your hands or not burn not. Yeah, I'll make hold it with one. my mage right. hand. All right. So with that, the uh, the bucket of tar is now having held aloft from the floating spectral mage hand that not is controlling. Uh, Probably gonna need some light in there too. So. He can cast two spells. They have to be at third level. Correct. And his cantrips are. Herb. So if he casts Armor of Agathas, it's going to take up one of his levels. Correct. And Hex would be another one. Correct. Uh, everybody back away from this bucket. Uh, and I just uh, crackle my hands and send a firebolt at the bottom of it. All right, so being careful not to destroy the bucket itself, uh, which, while it is made of metal, you're uncertain of its uh, you know, structural integrity, but you do focus on a, kind of a slow burn of this flame, kind of controlling the firebolt to be a gradual burn. As you do, you watch as the metal iron in the bottom of this bucket begins to heat to a dull orange, into a brighter orange. And after a few moments of concentrating, you can see what looks like a faint... The tar seems to be heating, and to a fairly more liquidy consistency than its rather cold and more solid form that you found it. That is the most relaxed that spell has ever gone. <laughs> At which point the third lock comes off, the guards begin pulling the chains through the various uh, loops until eventually the door is exposed. It opens and on the inside, there's a few steps that descend into what looks to be a double door beyond that. One of the doors is partially open, and it is darkness with a faint red glow beyond that. Ugh. This place is creepy as shit. Yeah. yeah. I turn to one of the guards. Is there any light in there or are we going to need to bring our own? Um, I, there's probably some light, um, but wouldn't hurt to bring your own. 
especially for that one, and points to Caleb. Yeah, Yasha, could I Do you need to borrow a torch from you? Yes, of course. So your hands are free to work? Yes, good idea. Here. Thank you. Ford's going to go ahead and cast Armor of Agathis. I also have a hooded lantern right. if you like, if you'd prefer. So as Ford touches the front of his chest armor, you watch as the cold air kind of solidifies, nice giving this on. mist and bits of ice crystal protruding from his leather armor. Hope that was a good call. That'll what did fine. Ford do? All right. Um, and Bo puts on her goggles. You got it. Eldritch Blades. As all of you are kind of ushered past the metal door, the guards all kind of gather on the opposite side, and the lead guard of the unit goes, Very well. Um, may the plat Platinum Dragon guide you. So Closes the door, and you hear the chains kind of the opposite side being locked as you all kind of turn back, looking down the six or seven feet of descending stairs before it levels into the double doors partially open and the darkness beyond. And that's where we're going to take a quick break. Ah! Oh, we were about to fight! Uh, oh. Well, we're going to go ahead and dive into that just because it, if we go into a sure, battle, sure. it might take a little while. We'll take the break now before that, and then we can dive into it immediately as we return. Um, Let's try diplomacy. Perfect! <laughs> yeah. Shiny oh. blade balls are easy to talk to. Um, Dear spinning death machine. This is Phantasmagoria. I'm, I'm definitely is, having some. Yeah. <laughs> Alrighty, guys. So um, we'll be back here in a few minutes. We're going to take a five, ten minute break to uh, to get ourselves comfy, food, water, and mm -hmm. other releases <laughs> of functions. Thanks, uh, Marissa. Uh, and we'll see you guys here in just a moment. So uh, hang tight in the uh, in the chat if you want to. Uh, we'll have a couple of fun videos to watch, and once again, if you haven't seen the Kickstarter of these awesome mayonnaise, you can go to oh, Crit, Crit, so cool. you can go to critroll.com for all that information. We have the links there to the Kickstarter. The guys at Steam Forge did an amazing job, and we hope you like them. All right, we'll see you here in a few minutes, and welcome back. Uh, so, wow, <laughs> wow, indeed, indeed. Uh, so, welcome back. Uh, <clears throat> coming back into the game. So you have all descended down and reached the double doors, partially open, and stepped quietly into the interior chamber of this sealed portion of the Gearhole prison. Um, there is, looks like a faint flicker of those same ember light torches uh, that give off faint bits of red glow, but a number of the walls seem to have been damaged. Actually, as you step inside and go to a quick look, the doors that are behind you and the walls around you are scraped and gashed from hundreds and hundreds of blade marks. It looks like whatever is in here has spent a lot of time just grinding around and looking for a means of escape or patrolling with its blades out over and over again. Parts of the walls have kind of fallen in a bit, and there's rubble in areas where it's starting to erode away the interior of the sealed chamber. But everywhere you look, to the right, left, and along the ground, all you see are hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of blade-like grooves in the stone. That's not good. This is as, you know, I've heard the kids say these days, creepy AF. <laughs> it's got eyes, well, actually, it's got eyes and not ears, I don't think. When we saw the blueprints, was there any way for it to detect sound, or was it all visual? Uh, without your <laughs> massive intelligence well roll, you weren't able to discern that information, unfortunately. Oh, so Chester. Oh, oh. Let's pretend we're whispering. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Maybe pass without a trace, Jester. Oh. Uh, we can do that. Let's cast pass without a trace, and I'm going to light up my this sword. Is a second level spell, if I recall. So that'd be your that last. would be our last mm -hmm. second level spell. Wait, let's. Uh, Maybe not. Um. Maybe not. Maybe not pass without. Let's let's do spirit because once it sees us, it doesn't matter anymore. Um, so let's not do that yet. Okay, never mind. Keep let's going. do. A, I'm gonna just light up my swords, both of them. Um, yet with ice. Okay. So that's uh, brings me Burn down to 49 ice. points of hit point, 49 hit points. So that's fun. Um, wow, that'll be a lot of fun. Ooh. That's that's thrilling. Um, there's a door over there. Do you want to sneak over and see if you can open Sure, it? sure, I'll go, I'll sneak over to the door and try to unlock it. Over here? Or see if it's locked. All right, 
Uh, it is a set of prison bars. There is a gate, and it is currently locked. The bars themselves, once again, you can see just rows and rows of gashes and scrapes across the metal. Uh, they're kind of bowed in a bit from impacts repeatedly. It's kind of slightly bent inward. Uh, you can attempt to, to pick the lock if you'd like. I will pick a lock. Go ahead and roll. So that's a proficiency mm -hmm. bonus plus dexterity. Um, that is a 14. A 14. It's not tricking the lock. These are not easy locks to get through. They're designed to hold prisoners, unfortunately, so they're fairly hardy locks. You spend a while with it and you're just unable to hit those tumblers, and it looks like it's not going to open. Make a perception check if um, you're looking through the bars. I, I want to sneak up behind uh, Nott. All right. I can open this if you need me to. I just like to let you, to save my shit. Oh, I mean, I don't know what's in it. Can I see? I can't see anything through it. Can Not I? with that perception roll, mm -hmm. no. I'm you see bits of rock. You see what looks like some cloth on the ground, that's it. Caleb, maybe save your shit for afterwards. Unless well, also, if I were to unlock it, it would be loud, loud so that's not good. Mm. After. Can we put some light in there, maybe take a look at what's in there? What's in that room? Yeah. Since we have an orb up, don't we? Yeah. No, we have a torch. Can we? Yeah, Yashu, you have the torch, right? Oh, no, Caleb has the torch. Caleb. Caleb, do you want to yeah. use the torch to take a look in there, maybe? I'm just keeping just an eye through this hallway, and I think I'm going to slowly start scooting. Start scooting up this way? Yeah, but no, again, like against the wall. All what right, a, yeah. what an amazing yeah. mini. Thank you. It's, <laughs> yeah. Quite yeah, these are the these are the painted prototypes. So give you a little bit of a glance of what these will look like. Oh. Um, there's a few changes for the final designs, of course, but these will give you an idea. Um, alrighty, so there's Molly on that side. Caleb, as you hold the torch up to the bars and look through, make a perception check with yeah. advantage. Okay. As you're following off of Knott's lead, and now can it's a small chamber, you can make out quite a bit of detail. Oh, that's good. Uh, 19. Ooh. Good. Glancing inside, you see that whatever scrape marks that mar the interior of this main chamber, there are none within this cell. Uh, whatever this creature, this 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 uh, gearkeeper construct is, it did not manage to breach these uh, gates. However, on the opposite side, you see what looks to amount to be three different bed setups for prisoners. Uh, some that seem to have just either they were trying to claw their way out, or uh, the impact of slamming on the other walls caused bits of it to fall in and collapse. And there's piles of stone and 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 fallen earth on the other side. You see three skeletons. Mm -hmm. Um, they've been decomposing for quite some time. Probably prisoners that couldn't escape and had no other way out. That sucks. That's rough. Okay, we can check this off our list, probably. Yeah. There are some dead inmates in here. Right, if the thing comes out here, we're all dead, so we should probably figure out a way to stop it. We could all get in that room if we have to. All right, but I can't open it. I feel like normally you don't want to get trapped in a room with something bigger and spinning with 12 blades. Yeah. I think we'd be better off almost holding this choke point. Yeah. That's the hope, but we have these other, t we, we have some options over here. Is there anything I can see from my perspective from where I'm, where I'm standing right now? Make a perception check. I knew you'd say that. Uh, that's a uh, 16. A 16? Glancing through, your dark vision is 60 feet, correct? Mm -hmm. You can just make out the details of another interior chamber. Looking within, you can see portions of the walls inside are also equally scraped apart, and edges of the, the fine, uh, well-set stonework have been just marred with repeated gashes all over. It looks like beyond that there was another prison cell, but those bars have been breached, as they are currently bent, gnarled, and twisted, and pulled out of place. The cell beyond it appears to be open. I'm going to move up and uh, go to the opposite side of where Molly is All and right. peek down the opposite way, just like he did. All right. Anybody else moving anywhere? Mm -hmm. um, well, while people are moving around the room, I whisper, uh, just uh, for our options here, if we want to kick this off and don't mind getting its attention, I can magically unlock this uh, door here, which will make a sound, and then uh, instantly lock it, so if we wanted to, we could all hustle inside here and maybe attack at a range, just as an option. Does the door have holes? 
The door is open. Well, there, are there, are, there are bars on it's this. Bars. Yes. It's, yeah. it's not a door. It's correct. It's just a, a cage. Yes, cage. and it's, it's partially bent inward from the impact. It looks like it sustained quite a bit of, of brunt uh, force to it over time. So that would put Bo and Yasha at a disadvantage, but uh, the rest of us could take pot shots at it from in here. You know, I like that idea. Maybe Yasha and I can stand and kind of hide and crouch in the corners while you guys get its attention and shoot it from range. Because I, what I would be afraid of is if we were all in there and it eventually did what it did to those bars over there and busted in, and we were all sitting ducks on the inside. Mm -hmm. But if you but guys... I could be wrong. But if but you guys got with in... With what I know how to do, I don't think it can do that to this door for a short amount of time. It looks like it... Mm, you have a plan. Well, I'm talking about magic. I can magically seal this door unless it has a way to deal with that. It will not be able to get through. That's pretty good. Let's move quickly, though. Make an intelligence check, uh, Caleb, if you don't mind. Uh, that is uh, 15. 15, okay. And uh, you were referring, I believe, to the spell... Uh, uh, arcane Lock. Arcane Lock, right. Yeah. Uh, so, impassable until it is yep. broken, or the, the spell, spell is dispelled, dispelled or suppressed. Yep. Uh, I mean, it's it can still be forced open. It's just a higher DC to do so. So it's possible, but it, it's making it a much harder door to break through. Okay. So you have you have you have a valid point in what you're saying. Yes. Can I still complete my perception check and see yes, you may. if I see down here? Go for it, make perception check. Not great, seven. Seven, unfortunately, even with your dark vision, it's kind of hard to look past that way. You you can see what looks to be another chamber. Um, uh, at your current vantage point's a little bit out of the way, and it looks like there's there's, there's just not enough information from here. You have to get a little closer to make out the details. Is there anything that would warrant a couple people hiding while some people got in the yeah, in the thing? That. Like, would is there something that looks like Yasha and I could maybe hide? I'm a little at disadvantage looking at this angle. There are some piles of, of rubble and portions of the walls that have collapsed inwards. So everyone's on so this we can side get you can table. get up and get a little bit of height if you want, and we can also if we went inside that that room us, though those those with range. The, the creature oh, would probably one. give up and go back into hiding until we came out, I would assume. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe it would just keep pounding until you died. You could still mage hand the tar between the bars, right? Sure, mm -hmm. sure. Let's try it. You don't even have to put the bar in, tar in so it can be outside That's and just still saying. mage hand it. Caleb, can you still, um, can you lift that gate spell if um, we need to get it back out? I'm oh assuming. yeah, instantly. All right. So. Yasha, we're going to be on the outside then? Yep. That's scary and dangerous. This is scary and dangerous oh. work. Wait, are you and Yasha going to be on the outside? Well, we don't have any range. Neither do I. Yeah. So you're going to be on the outside too. I thought so we put all the uh, range people in there, draw its attention, it would attack them, and then while it's there, we can all gang up on it. The three amigos. A terrible idea. But go for it. So, what are you guys doing? Yeah, let's do it. So wait, so so you bruisers, you're staying out here. But we're gonna kind of hide amongst hide. this rubble on the opposite side, yeah, and you guys are gonna hide. start. Yasha, where are you uh, moving? Yeah, to? we're gonna hide behind the other. Right there. there yeah, mm -hmm. and uh, Bo as well. Bo, you're moving over here as well. Yeah. yeah. All righty. Can I kind of get up on top of the rubble and crouch down? Yeah. And I'm gonna attempt sure. to hide in the corner. Uh, it's gonna be hard to hide and climb it as well. Uh, Do about there as good as we can get up there. Oh, Yasha, before I forget, I got Molly. you something. You did. And uh, I hand her one of the silk flowers from the from the festival. Mm. It doesn't press well, but you know. It's still gonna be very special. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Molly. God Molly. for a good life. You stay in there? Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna stay super crouched and Does Jester have her spiritual weapon out? She doesn't yet. Okay. Maybe ah. Get it ready. She's gonna wait. Also... Wait, what? What wait? I am out. I, I do not have the components I need for arcane lock. Damn it! What do you need? No. A lot of gold dust. 
a lot of gold dust. Anybody got a lot of gold dust? I know, I know. Can we? Can we grind some gold really fast? <laughs> yeah. File quietly, some. Quietly. quietly file down gold coins. Yeah. Um, okay. All right. Well, plan B. Never mind. Plan B. That's fine. Um, yeah. Do you want me to scout ahead to the to the area yes. that you've or the seen? Cat. Yeah. Oh, or the cat. Yes. How about the cat oh, goes yeah. to the area where Molly has seen, which Liam, for you, is the. Bottom left of the picture I sent you of the. Yeah. So, where are you sending What's Pumpkin? Sent? Down here. Uh, into the last uh, unexplored room. Okay. Uh, no, this is this is the one that first unexplored room. First on the first explored room that uh, Molly has seen a little bit of. Mm. Sorry, I was looking in my spell book and not paying attention to you lot. What were you hind me to do? We're, Send we're a cat. Sending a, we're sending a cat to scout, take a look. Scout with cat. Kitty yeah, scout. Yeah, okay. It's maybe the end All right, of so I'm going to back uh, as far away from that door as I can. All righty. And I will send Frumpkin in. All right, so moving back in the corner with Bo and Yasha. Put it about there, we'll say. Ladies. Um, you begin to focus, and Frumpkin heads to the right side of the fork into the chamber you've already looked into, towards the open cell doors that are currently pried off that archway. As Frumpkin glances past, uh, make a stealth check for Frumpkin. Yeah. I have some shit. Oh. <laughs> that is, uh, I don't have the cat paper with me in this state that I'm in because I didn't know I'd be playing. That's okay. So I rolled a 15. That's you rolled a 15? Okay. Yeah. Plus cat. Let's go with that. 15 plus, plus cat. cat. All right. <laughs> Frumpkin glances inside this busted cell and sees what I'm using as an interpretation of a large <gasps> spherical oh, metal goodness. object oh, that's shit. about eight feet diameter on any side. Oh, it looks like a series of, of overlapping metal plates that look almost clustered together at odd angles. You can see elements of it look scraped and dented. It looks like it's been doing some serious damage to it over time. Um, as it sits there, Resting and Frumpkin approaches, you watch one of the tiny little metal plates kind of open. A lens kind of pokes out towards Frumpkin, withdraws back in. The plate closes, and you watch as about six of these long blade like spider legs stick out of it as it pulls back and begins to roll forward with a very extreme oh, I pace. Frumpkin out of there. All right, with that point, as um, it rolls forward, Frumpkin just manages to bamp out of this dimension as the object <laughs> slams into the opposite wall. You guys feel the entire chamber suddenly <laughs> from the impact, and you hear the scraping of metal in the distance. I'm going to recap his hand and pick up the, the bucket of tar. Bucket of tar. <laughs> Get it ready to. It, it rolls across the way oh God, and disappears serious? into the other chamber. Not yet. I'm going to stealthily move forward, kind of back where I was across from Molly. Go ahead and make a stealth check, please. Jesus Christ, this just got really. I have an interesting idea. Not where you want to go? Um, towards the the yeah. narrower hallway. What's the one that does Here? stuff? Yeah, just just on the on the edge of it. Right there. Yeah. Okay. And oh. Do I hear any movement or anything? Well, we can... You do hear the same object shifting on the other side. Fifteen. Fifteen. Okay. Oh no. Um, as not as you're there at the edge and Bo's there, you glance in. Now that you guys are close enough and you can see kind of shifting in there, you pay attention. You can see this other chamber is open with another uh, cell off to the side, and you see as it <laughs> slams into that door, spins around, and you watch as one of the lenses kind of <laughs> peeks around the corner, right at where Bo had just moved into the far oh. corner. Um, uh, uh, Jester is going to. Uh, is this a good idea? Jester is going to cast her uh, her spiritual weapon, okay, and put it right in the center of the like like the room. Yeah, something a big, nice, shiny object to right. to, 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 to distract. Where's Ford going? Because we're about to go into combat. You have one. Uh, yeah, are we all pulling against the walls to try? Uh, where is Ford going? Yeah, just make Ford kind of go by the gate, maybe. Right there. Back. Okay. Back a bit. Back a bit. Uh, and then Bo is gonna go ahead and take out those 
ball Wait, bearings. Can, can we put Jester in the in the corner? Mm-hmm. Yeah, Jester can back up there. Let's can not we... kill our friends, D and D characters. I um, need all of you to roll initiative. I'm gonna, if we still have a bit of an action, I'm gonna toss my my bag of ball bearings and try and throw a bunch of ball bearings right. Here. Sam, okay. will you take a new picture and send it to me? All right, so you, you throw the ball bearings out, and clattering. As that happens, the leg the legs are still out, kind of rear it backward, and you watch as they retract as it runs itself, rolling forward in your direction, ricocheting off that wall. The ball bearings, as it, as it grinds across the bottom, get fired off like small, small impact bullets. From the grinding of the metal plates and the force of it hitting, I need both Knot and Bo to make dexterity saving throws. Oh okay. Oh no. Save. Twenty-one. Twenty-one. No. Oh wait, not with a, with advantage or no? Not with advantage, just a single roll. Okay, eighteen then. Eighteen. Okay, you guys both managed to just duck out of the way. Uh, they don't seem to hit you. It's only a handful of them that, upon the the impact of it hitting stone and being pressured beneath, they kind of just shoot off uh, in your direction. Oh, ball bearings don't uh, work. So, okay, rolling for initiative? initiative rolls, guys. Okay. Um, roll for yourself, Bo. Jeez. All right, and then roll for. That eight. I'll roll for and for uh, Jester and Ford as well. I'll roll for Jester. Uh, Oh! <laughs> All right. I'm rolling for four. 25 to 20. Oh, we're so far. Um, hang on, hang on. So far. Um, sorry, sorry. Another person's character. Okay, okay. 25 to 20, anybody? <laughs> 20 to f- 15? Uh, uh, 19. Whoa! Who are you? I don't know. You are gonna. Yasha. But I don't know what's uh, early on. It's gonna be a lot of dodging. 15 to 10. Yeah. Uh, uh, Ford is 14. Hey. All right. Bo is 10. All right. Okay. Uh, 10 to 5. Seven. <laughs> um, seven for me as well. All right. And, and uh, Jester is six. So, so Caleb. Caleb and Jester are in the same. At, at Caleb and Jester are six, Molly and Not are both seven. Seven. Got it. All right, so top of the round, as you see it come riding and curve around the corner and <laughs> slam into that wall, the stone kind of uh, bends inward even further, and you can see bits of the masonry kind of flake and fall off to the ground, clattering in small pieces of stone. Uh, it turns, and you can see now the six kind of spider like blade legs sticking out of it. Six more <laughs> shoot out of the top of it and all kind of oh. <laughs> begin whirling around and spinning. Oh, God. <laughs> Uh, and there, amongst this chaos, you see the, the lens kind of sitting right there, kind of just barely peeking through its armored shell. Um, with that, Yasha, you're up first. Okay. So uh, I would. I mean. Like to rage. Yeah. Alrighty. Yes. It's the time. It's the time. And. Um, mm. Oh. Can I. Do I just go in? I just yeah, go man. in. All right. This is it. Can I get to it? I know. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40. You just barely get into its range with your barbarian speed as yeah. you rush it. <laughs> Anger out of your face. You draw your magician's judge blade in the air. Oh, no. <laughs> Do you have advantage? <laughs> I didn't reckless. Okay. Um, 11. 11, unfortunately, does not hit. Your blade scrapes across its armored exterior, not finding purchase in any of its innards. Do I, Divine Fury, can you do on the first, or only the if first the first? attack that hits. The first attack that hits. Correct. Okay. Um, can I use my extra attack? Yeah, you okay. get that every round. Extra attack. All right. Come on. Hi. Okay, okay, that's better. That's a, that's a 21. 21 hits, go ahead and roll damage. Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay. This is it. We're so fucked. Two Ds. Two Kick it in the ball! Hey! Okay. <laughs> uh, plus 12. Yeah, plus. So it's, it's, you roll 2d6 for the weapon, yeah. 3d6 for the Divine Fury. Oh, 3d6? Or oh, no, it's additional half your level, isn't it? Yeah, which was a three, plus three, right? It's 2d6 plus three. 2d6 plus three, right? Yeah, and then so and 12. Then, 12 and your rage damage, which is two. Oh, great. So, yeah, 14. 
And then is there Divine Fury still? Or is no, because that? okay. that's only if the first. Well, no, it's no. the first attack. That, that would hits. be a first attack. Right. Okay. I'm saying, yeah, you get Divine Fury for this hit because the first one missed, this one does get it. So. Okay, okay. So an extra d6. Oops. Okay, an extra two, so 16 total. Okay. So with that. Bring! The first strikes off, the second one you bring down, and you watch as the blade carves down, and one of its metal arms kind of bends off to the side, and the blade actually digs into some of the, the, the gears. You watch as Yasha's blade finding its way in, sparks go and it's shrieking off, and the blade gets jettisoned off. You have to kind of like hold it before it gets shot outside of it. Uh, the clockwork kind of pushing it out of its innards. The armor plate kind of clicks over and guards its face. All right. Um, okay, I'll stay. Did it lose a blade just now? It looks like it's bent back a bit, but that's okay. All right, that ends Yasha's turn. Ford is up next. Yeah, Ford. All right, Ford is going to cast Hex. All right. Hex. Hex. Hex, ma'am. I'm going to Hex that robot. Hex the robot. With that, the robot He's is hexed. I am a Hex. Hang on, wait. That doesn't, that doesn't, um, nope, 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 nope. It doesn't mess with the armor of Agathis. Just checking. Yep. All right, so uh, you do have a concentration spell on Ford so for this. That is Hex. And yep. then, uh, <laughs> then he's going to cast, he's going to take his falchion, he's going to flip it, and he's from <laughs> the hilt. He's going to go, Phew, and he's going to cast Eldritch Blast, because I saw him do that like once a, before. Like a from the hip shotgun. Like That's, a I like he it. did it before. <laughs> I'm just ripping it off from Travis. So it's two shots. So go ahead and fire twice. Pshoosh, pshoosh. Pshoosh, pshoosh. Uh, 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 15? 7 plus 8. 7 plus 8, 15. 15. You fire, the Eldritch Blast hits and actually disperses against the armor. It does not hit. Oh, no. Duh, oh, no. this, right, that magic shit. He's going to try it one more time. Right. That's balanced. Okay, that's better. 13 plus 7. Um, 20. 20 does hit. So 20 roll, hits. So roll a d10 plus 4. Plus another d6 for plus hex. Plus 4. No, so right. Not not a D4. Plus four damage to whatever you roll in the D10. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. D10 plus D6. Me don't know how. Mm. <laughs> uh, six. Oh, uh, sorry, sorry. Five plus four is nine. nine. Plus damage. Plus four. Three. From no, that's it. I rolled a three oh, okay. and a two yeah, plus right. a four. It's not a lot yeah. of damage. Nine damage crap. from the Elder's Blast. Second one does manage to pierce some of its armor, and you see within the interior of it, there's a flash of green. On the inside, you see it kind of curl around from the interior, almost looking like cracks in the armor are suddenly glowing, and then no more. That finishes Ford's action. What did you, and what did you roll to hit? I just realized I forgot to do something. Say again. Mm -hmm. What did you roll to hit? I rolled 21. A 21. 21. So we know 20 hits. Yep. Um, Thank you. Okay, and now Burrigard. Uh, is Ford going to stay where he is? Uh, yes. Okay. Because I'm scared. Um, Bo is well, going. Bo doesn't go yet because uh, it's now oh, the it gatekeeper's goes. turn. Oh, I'm sorry. No. That's okay. I didn't know. Yet. That's all right. So the gatekeeper. Oh, I told a little deeper into it. Beginning of its turn, it's going to go ahead and attempt to roll over Yasha to go into the chamber. Yasha, you need to make an athletics or acrobatics check. Oh, Come boy. on, girl. Okay, 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 okay. You got this. You're raging, so you have advantage on your acrobatics That's check. That athletics is also pretty, pretty, pretty sweet, though. Yeah. Ooh. Oh. <laughs> Nine. Ooh. No. So first off, you suffer. I rolled the wrong one. Oh. Seven points of piercing damage <laughs> as it just rolls over and the blades kick into you. Is that, is that halved? halved? It is halved. Is it <laughs> and an additional three points of bludgeoning damage as you're crushed beneath its weight and you are knocked pro. So that's a total of, uh, uh, you said three and. I'm sorry. Seven. It was seven points it was seven of damage. Seven, four, three. So it'd be ten halves. So you take five points of damage. Five total. points of damage. Okay. That's okay. Okay. okay that's it does. It. Roll past here, stopping uh, at this point. I, it'd be about here, I think. Uh, as it spins this direction, it's the things that drew its attention originally, which is bow and knot in that corner. Uh, <laughs> not you do get an attack of opportunity with a melee weapon if you have one, but you have your crossbow out. I probably have my crossbow so, yeah, up. So you don't, you don't okay. get much of an attack there. I'll, I'll, I'll hit it with my crossbow. Roll an attack. <laughs> Improvised weapon for a melee. Yeah. Give us sort of how. 18. 18 just hits. <laughs> oh, yes. nice. 18 is what <laughs> hits, okay. y'all. Do I get a point of damage? You get a point of damage. Yeah! Oh, Eat it! 
<laughs> your hand crossbow, as you slam into it, you look back and it looks like some of the wood is <laughs> splintered somewhat, yeah, and you're like, it's oh, it's not, not enough to the point where it, it looks like it's not going to function, maybe, but it's going to need some repairs. Um, I need a new crossbow, is what I need. Yeah, you oh, there you go. All right, so as it turns around, you watch as the front of it, where the, where the lens is, the lens retracts in. No. The plates in front suddenly open, leaving what looks to be this open black, vacuous space, almost like a like a like a mouth or a, or a gate opens oh. in front. At which point you hear this very high whirring winding oh, no. sound. You see sparks inside, and a blast of heated oh, no. shrapnel oh. shoots outward in a thirty foot spray. It can do that against both of you, Clap right there. You madman. Uh, so I need you both to make a dexterity saving throw, please. Oh, rough. Twelve. Mm, that's not too bad. Twenty-two. That's success. So you take half damage. Okay. That is okay. Uh, Twenty-five points of piercing damage to you, not. Oh. Ah! I, because I hit it with my thing, do I no longer have a reaction? Correct. Oh shit. <laughs> Now you know about the reactions. 20, 25 points of damage. Of piercing damage and halved for you, so you so take 12. 12. Uh, so that's its shrapnel blast is done. That's the end of its turn. Uh, <clears throat> that brings us to Bo. Ha 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 Yeah. Um, okay. They're being hit with hot shrapnel. I'm going to kind of do a cool pole vault over. Over Nat, something like this way. Right. Um, yeah, I guess. I, uh, yeah. Over Wait, Nat. where's Yasha? Yasha's here. Yasha's prone in the ground. I'll right get there. on the other side of where Yasha will eventually be. Oh, so around here. Uh huh. So on this side of it. All right, you're moving Let's over go. the melee. All right. You got it. And then um, attack. Poof, go for it. E whack it with my stick. I'm gonna try and jam it up in between one of those you gears. Also have the mouth, you can throw the tar in the iron. So. That's terrible. Um, that doesn't hit. That's like ten. Ten misses. The first strike with your staff just scrapes off of its armor. No pack. I'm gonna readjust and try and go for it again. That's the exact same roll. Those are two twos nice. in a row. The second one, you strike again. This time, when the blade swings outward, and thankfully the blade doesn't hit the staff to cut the wood. However, it does the backhand impact it and prevent the blow from actually striking its body. Two twos. That's two excellent. Twos. And I dos, guess dos. I will do an unarmed attack. All right, so you're going to punch, uh, punch the armored sphere. So frustrated that, that I can't yeah, get my staff up there, I'm just going to go and try and whack it with go my it. fist. 17, which just misses. Just misses. Or not so much a miss, you hit it, but you go, ping! Oh! Oh! Oh, you can feel that in the in like from the knuckles to the funny bone. Do I have any more movement? Uh, from there, it's fine. You have ten feet. Can I kind of back up toward, uh, or even get this? Mm, I'm just gonna stay where I am. Okay, finishing bow's turn. That brings us to not. Oh wait, yeah, hang on, hang on. What? As a bonus act, no, I use my bonus, bonus action. action. Fuck. Okay, keep going. That was not. Cool. So, is its lens out? Uh, its lens appears to be out currently, just kind of surveying this scenario. Yes. Go for the lens. Go for it. All right. Bonus action. I will use the mage hand to deliver the tar right on that lens. All right. I'll say for the purposes of aiming on this, with your intention. Go ahead and make a d20 attack roll, adding your perception bonus. Oh, well, there is no box to that. Well, that's how do you how do you feel about that? Well, it fell, so you'll we'll never know what it was. Seventeen. Seventeen. I'll say for the purposes of that, because it's not armor you're trying to strike through; it's just trying to aim for a position. That will be enough. So with that, the tar, with a toss, sploosh, all across the lens. At which point you see it—the the sticky, uh, still kind of warm, thick tar kind of spray onto it and kind of get inside the interior of its armor for the moment. Yeah. The lens starts like, and you hear what previously was. Now that it's close to you, you can hear there's hundreds and hundreds of small clicks and winding sounds in the inside. There's now a, uh, a rapid as the lens is trying to find some sort of direction. It is currently blinded. Yeah, yeah. our plan worked yes. perfectly. Um, am I? Well, how far am I from the thing? Uh, technically, you are ten feet from it. 
Do you think I'm in melee range? Probably. Uh, well, the blades have a bit of reach, so you uh, are technically it's a ten foot, ten foot blade reach. Then can I? Well, can we call that? Can I use my action to disengage? Uh, you can. You can use your action to disengage. Yeah, I mean, disengage generally is an action. Okay, I will disengage and run. <laughs> All right, which direction? Uh, just straight to the place it just came from. All right, so you can get there. Mm -hmm. All right, you can go one more if you want to. Sure. All right, so there you go. You can still keep it in your in your visual range, but that's thirty feet back. And now you spin around with your crossbow. Yep. Uh, not suffering any attacks of opportunity. Okay. All right, Molly. Um, all right, can I see anywhere where the, where, the, where there seems to be a crack in the armor and make a? Uh, you may, yes. Yeah. Well, you can go ahead and try and inspect. Uh, I just I just want to see if there, there's anything that looks like a good target to just start start um, doing some damage to. Uh, at the moment, it hasn't taken a lot of damage, and it's hard to see if there's mm. any. Like to to start. Is, is there a plate open or anything at the moment near me? Uh, the only plate that's open is the one that has the lens visible, um, but it's kind of really close to the body. And right now, there's a blade that's just kind of spinning in its space. So um, I'm going to try and get to the side without the blade. And I'm going to take a couple. I'm going to try and, and and chop open one of the one of the uh, one of the plates on the back. I'm going to start hacking away at it. Okay. So well, actually, using... there's there there is a there's a even with the blades, there's an open there's an open place right now. There's a, is there a place for me to start poking the tender tender insides? Uh, at the moment, not really. Like it's 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 still fresh in battle, and it's still armor plates are pretty much protecting all of its. All right, I'm going to try and find one armor plate and just start going to town. All right, so where are you going to attack it from? Um, direction? I'm going to run to like the. I'm, I want to get this left hind corner, so I'm just going to run over to the opposite side of the. I'm going to like flake it with the lollipop. Or, oh, with the blood pump. Mm -hmm. Alrighty, so you're right there on top of the door. Mm -hmm. Alrighty, so go ahead and take your attacks. All right, first attack. Is a natural twenty. Yes. Oh. Yes. Nice. Go ahead and make nice your too. make your damage on that, and then roll the second attack. So that's two d six. Two d six with ice damage. All right. So that's uh, seven, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen points of damage. Seventeen points of damage. Nice. Next attack with the same sword. Uh, actually, I'm so sorry. That's the wrong sword. That's uh, seventeen. Uh, 18 points of damage. 18 points of damage. That's how the summer stands. Correct. Summer okay. Stands. And then the next one, the summer's dance again, is ugh, not quite as good. That's a 12. That does not 12 hit. Does not. The first strike shing, carves through, and you watch as some of the armor bends inward. And as you cut through, uh, plates kind of bend inward and have to try and retract to protect, but they're getting locked in place. Like you've actually bent them to the point where they, they cannot reform this armored mesh that it can. It's kind of like whoosh, whoosh, trying to correct Ooh. itself, but busted in place. The second strike, as you come down, uh, one of the blades kind of catches and parries it off to the side, and ugh, no, no impact on the second blow. Okay, going for a third strike. Go for it. Uh, and oh 14. 14 does not hit. Mm -hmm. this, is a, this is a tough mother. You go to strike a third time, you do hit, but ting, it just kind of doesn't cut through. The blade shakes a bit and you pull back, cursing yourself. Um, is, it, is, it, is it worth seeing if it's going to, well, it's blinded, so it doesn't actually, like it, so it's got a disadvantage if it tries to even hit me with, a, with, a, if, with, a, with an attack. So I'm going to try, try and back off and climb up that. that For those rock. questioning, uh, even though it is blinded, it, it, it lowers its attacks. Some people are like, attacking things with blindness so I have an advantage. Because it is nothing but a spinning whirring of blades, and technically it has multiple forms of sight, um, uh, it is not taking disadvantage, uh, or not granting advantage on the attacks against it. Um, so I'm going to try and, I'm just going to try and crawl up that, that uh, hop up that hill really quickly. Alrighty. So you try and move this way? Yep. All right, so you're hopping up this edge. Uh, to as, as high as I can get to get out of its range. Uh, okay, so that would be probably over here, best you can, yeah. to this end. Right over there. All good. right. Um, so you managed to, to scoot yourself up to that side, climb away. Mm -hmm. It does swing out towards you. It does have disadvantage on the attack because of the blindness. Um, uh, so that will bring it to uh, a 13 to hit. That does not hit. Nice. So you just managed to whoosh, duck out of the way. not have a reaction anymore. Ooh, nice. All right, so that ends your turn there. Uh, that brings us to Caleb and Jester. Uh, do you? Uh oh, we can't hear you. We can't. We, we Why can't, can't hear, we you. hear you. Uh, there we go. Yeah, we can't hear you now. Oh wait, do it again. Can you hear me right now? Yes. yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'll go, but I can't see. The map is a pixelated mess of shit from my point of view. Um, <laughs> after Molly Mog uh, cleared the way, 
is the thing on its own? Is it in a forty-foot cube of empty space, or any of my allies? No, it is it? surrounded. Uh, there's bow to one part of it. It's about ten feet from Yasha and about fifteen feet from Molly. It's a pretty tight right, well, box we're in. We're in a tight box. Yeah, yeah. Slow is out the window. I pull out my uh, clay cat's paw and mutter a few words, and uh, I will pass Maximilian's earthen's grasp, and a soil cat's claw comes up off the ground and swipes. It needs to make a strength save. 16. Strength save. Yes. Uh, that, that, is <laughs> <laughs> uh, that is going to be a 15. What is your DC? 16. 16. Oh! All right, That's go ahead and pass place. The And it takes 2d6 damage. Damage. So hold on. Damage. Now in New Zealand. Two d six. <laughs> uh, takes uh, five Six points. Damage. Like damage. Five points of damage. Got it. All righty. So it is held in place. Have Great. To use an action. To break out. <laughs> that it does. Okay. Uh, that ends your turn, Caleb. Are you going to stay back in the corner where you are? Uh, if I can squish even one square further away from it, I would. All right. You are backed up into the corner as far away as you can get. Uh, that yeah, ends Caleb's turn. Jester's up. What are you guys doing with Jester? Um, first off, we're going to have the the uh, um, uh, uh, spiritual weapon take a swipe right at the where the where the plate's already broken and hit it again. Okay. Uh, which is, I believe, a uh, where is where is it's a it's a bonus action mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. it's a plus seven to hit. Yeah, oh, that's not it. It's, it's around here somewhere. It's there it is. It's a plus seven. Just roll. Yeah. So. That's a uh, uh, seven. Uh, it, uh, yeah, fifteen. All right, fi uh, that was fifteen to uh, to, hit. to hit. No, that's wait, not wait, hit. wait. Eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Yeah, yeah that's not hit. The the the, the light hop swings down. Wait, psh, and then just bounces off the armor. The spiritual weapon is not able to penetrate its armored hide. Damn it. Okay. That's so your bonus action. Now as an Just still action. has an action. Um. I don't think this is gonna do anything. Playing with your friends, D and D Yeah, I was I was thinking of, of trying like maybe a um, simple sacred yeah. flame. Um, we could do sacred flame, or a, um, a, um, um, if you were near, I'd say cure wounds, uh, or we could just do a, a guiding bolt. Hey, that's a classic. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to do gui uh, do guiding bolt. You roll this one because I'm like. Okay. okay. Uh, so yeah. We're going to do di diving Dying. bolt. Diving bolt. <laughs> That's a 26. 26 yeah. definitely hits. Go ahead and roll damage on that. Uh, that's 4d6 radiant damage. Yes, and the next attack on it has advantage. <gasps> oh, I had an idiot. Go ahead. Oh, there we go. Woo! Okay. Uh, Two. Uh, 14, is that any, any pluses? No, just 46. 14. 14 points of damage, nice. As the as the, the the released guiding bolt slams into the side of it, you see the blast of, of divine energy explodes. Some of the plates dent inward, and now you see this kind of glittering energy that's in uh, entwining its body, giving you a, a glimmer of some of the weak points to help you hit where it'll hurt the most. Uh, does that finish Jester's turn? She gonna stay where she is, or gonna move? Uh, she's she's. Uh, I feel like we should open up a little bit. Um, I think she's gonna maybe. See if she can crawl over to the door so she can hide behind it in case it's something something bad yeah, happens. Okay, so she tries to move yeah, into door the door. Actually, there. opens and closes, Matt. Yeah. In fact, in, in fact, she she might be she might be smart. Well, she has to keep the the spiritual weapon in visual range, right? Yeah. Okay. okay so good. she's gonna just use that as some cover. Okay. Uh, Sounds hello. good. So uh, that finishes just your turn. Top of the round, Yasha. Okay, so I'm going to. Pick myself up. Pick myself up. It's half your movement, so you still have 20 feet of movement. Do you wish to? Okay, yeah. So can I just flank, get kind of around so Bo and I are. Yeah, put that there for. So you are now flanking with Bo. Your first attack has advantage anyway because of the guiding bolt. Right. That's right. Okay. Up the butt. Does it have a butt, Matt? Uh, you cannot it. discern what appears to be any sort of rear end or exhaust port. Does it yeah. poop? Okay. You'll find out, I'm sure. Uh, 22. 22 hits. Go ahead and roll damage on that first strike. And that's, yeah, that's a lot. Everyone poops. We can't see the space. Oh, wait, no. And everybody poops unless they're an android. Mm. So, because then they must be destroyed. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. That's right. Poop, poop. 
Yeah. <laughs> uh, 16. Yeah. 16 points of damage. Ooh. Cutting through bits and pieces of it, mm. nice. That's your first strike on it. As you jam down, grinding off, you see some of the little plates kind of pull away from it, and once again, kind of lock, unable to push back into place. There's small places where you're starting to buckle parts of its exterior armor. So its AC actually does go down by one. Ooh! Oh. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Okay. <laughs> oh, okay. So get another. That's your first strike. You get a second attack. Okay. So we now know at least a seventeen will hit. That's not an advantage, right? You do because you're currently okay. flaking with oh, both. Yes. Yeah. Counts for flanking, bitch. Okay. Flanking. Um, yeah. That's a, a twenty-five. Twenty-five wow. does hit. Go ahead and roll damage. Not an extra because of not divine fury. Correct. It's just two d six plus five. Okay. That's uh, 11. 11 points of damage, nice, Yasha. Busting it out, all right, that finish your turn? Just a reminder that everyone is rolling at advantage while the cat's paw holds it. Ooh. Oh. Oh, oh because it's restrained? Mm-hmm. Right. It's and restrained right now. Good to know. All righty, so that finishes Yasha's turn, it's now Ford's go. <laughs> Do a cowboy <laughs> sound <laughs> turn up. Behind the, I go under the lollipop and I use the magical field of the lollipop to make it like me walking through a, a glitter fog machine. <laughs> and I walk up to him. I walk. I walk up to him. All right. Thank you. I walk up. And I'm on a attack with my pro chill. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So if, if you wanted. <laughs> Go for it. So go ahead and make two strikes with the falchion. First attack with advantage. I'm sorry, Travis. That's exactly how he talks. I'll take that 18 plus that seven. All right, that hits. So the first attack, it's a D8 plus. Plus hex. Plus a D8 plus four plus hex. <clears throat> and then I'm gonna do boom and blade boom. with my action. Is that not how this works? No. Okay, uh, no, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna yeah. do damage. Booming Blade is, is, is a, uh, a cantrip that only gives you one attack as part of the action, no, or no, I'm just you can take the... Real hard. That's okay. Uh, six plus two plus five, so eight plus five. All right, that's 13 See damage. See my math? <laughs> Good. I only do have, oh, I'm so excited. Long day. Day. I know. So as, you, as, as Ford kind of comes up, like holding the falchion hand, swings down, whack, carving through, you can see the shadows of the hex kind of helping the blade di dig in that much more. You have a second attack. No, oh, okay, I was still, still in very to dread. Yep, yep. Yuck, 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 yuck. <laughs> I'll take that 16. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, um, Travis is somewhere singing Dear Theodosia. Yeah, somewhere, somewhere <laughs> he's, he's just getting a nosebleed while this happens. Yeah. <laughs> uh, four plus four plus five, so 13. 13 points of damage? Yep. That hits again. Okay, okay. And with that, with Ford just carving into it twice with the blade each time, you could see as as the, the falchion's carving through each section, more and more armored pieces are pushing inward. Uh, not enough to lower its AC, but it is taking more and more damage, and sl slowly you're piercing its heavily uh, protected Do exterior. Do I have any more movement? Uh, Ford would have, uh, yeah, like ten more, ten more feet. Uh, he's he's just gonna back up, kind of back to that gate a little bit. Just one or two steps. Uh, two, if he can. All right. Is that a, still in yeah. melee. Oh, is he's still in melee. It's ten okay. foot range. Okay, 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 okay. All right. So that ends your turn. Yep. That's All Ford's right. turn. <laughs> That brings us to the gatekeeper construct. So the lens has retracted back into its armor, and you hear the sound. <laughs> oh, the lens comes out, and it has cleared it. the tar from its lens. Clef, you sick bastard! Damn it! Damn it. So he nope. did think of that. He nope. pulled that out of his face. He did. Oh, yeah, he said he, he didn't have a fail safe. He, that lion old bastard. Like a shit. Um. So, the um, lens retracts and <laughs> pops out the backside, immediately kind of scanning the source of what's currently clutching it in its dirt-driven uh, arcane paw. And the, uh, the blade arms on the top retract in, and instead you watch as these two heavy iron spears kind of lock into place what? and both go oh, firing God. outward towards Caleb. Oh no! Not my sweet boy! But they have disadvantage because it is restrained. Uh, so that with disadvantage is going to be an 18 to hit for the first oh, one. Yeah. Shield. All right. So it misses. All righty. The second one. 16, 16 and 18. So uh, 16 plus 8, it's going to be 24. Oh, yeah. Ooh. 
Oh, that will hit. Uh, those will hit. All right. So the first one, your shield, you see, kind of like it, it ricochets off and floats off in the background, spinning. The second one, however, pierces through the shield and hits you in the chest. Uh, that's going to be good. That's going to be uh, seventeen points of piercing damage. Good, good, good. Uh, and you are pinned to the wall. Oh, it actually good. pierced through cool. your chest and sh- oh. is now holding you into the stone. Your movement is zero, and you are considered restrained against the wall. Frodo. I'll also have to make a concentration check. No, you do, so Frodo. go ahead and make a constitution check. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, with the damage taken, it has to be at least a, a, a 10 or higher. Hold on. Uh. I rolled a three. No, and with that, <laughs> oh, God damn it. Oh, no. the paw is broken. Oh, shit. Well, it's still there, it's just not holding it. No, oh, if wait, you, no, it's gone. No, it's gone. It's gone. You've lost concentration yeah. in the spell. Uh, mm-hmm. And it did recharge its shrapnel blast. Um, oh, I'm just really wanting advantage on all my attacks. Oh, but I have Yasha you flanking. flanking. Currently. Okay. Um, all right, so. That being the case, it's going to go ahead and that's that finishes its turn. It's going to stay put because now it's now this, the blades are now grind out again and begin like just whirring and spinning around its its orb like body. Uh, that brings us to Bo. Okay. Bo, at the top of your turn, because you are within five feet of it, you automatically take whirling blade damage by being in proximity. Oh. Matt, was that 17 points of damage? That was, yes. I'm also in proximity. Yes, you do. So at the top of your turn, you'll take it as well. So that's uh, six points of slashing damage to you, Bo. Now take your turn. Five, six, six. Apply changes. D and D beyond. My mustache is falling off, so I better hold it on with another no, mustache. No, 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 no. Go, my no, stop. <laughs> just, just. Um, okay. I. <laughs> I'm having internet problems. Yeah. You. Better. Okay, I get an advantage on this attack, right? Uh, you do, because you're flanking. Okay, I'm going to try and once again get up in those plates. Get up on those uh, plates. That one's cocked underneath. Okay. Undercocked. I'll take. No, it was cocked underneath. It was tilted. It was undercocked. Okay. Mm. That dice is weird for that because then you rolled then the I d20 won't, twice. I won't use it. All right, so roll, roll the second one. Okay, 17 plus 7. For the second strike? I rolled both at the same. No, first a strike. The first roll you have is a 4 on the top, so roll for your second die. <laughs> okay. Just keep it, keep it I'm kosher. Just, okay, it's still an 18. 18 hits, yeah. All right, so go ahead and make your, your strike with your, with your staff. Okay. Four. Four points of damage. Plus uh, another four. All right, so that's so eight. eight. Uh, as your staff strikes across it, the wood of it, all damaging, doesn't seem to be having as strong an impact as you'd hope against its armored form. Because it's not magical? It seems to be resistant to something that is not magical. Oh, no. Even though I still hit, can I try and stun it with my stunning strike? Sure, go ahead, let's go ahead and... and I'm pretty sure. I haven't hit anything in so long, and I, I know, just want to I stun know. something. I know. I've had such bad luck the past two fights. I'm so sorry. Yeah, so that. I haven't been such a good month. should be kept in consideration. Yeah, no, that's not. That's right, right buddy. <laughs> All right, so. <laughs> so far, we've learned today that Ford sounds like this. Or her, 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 her. It's written because it mixes the key of the inside of the body. There is no. Key, but there is a magical core. I'll say that while you strike the body, attempt to stun it. While you're not affecting the key of a soul, the key that you're expending might interfere its central uh, energy core. So it has to make a Constitution saving throw. Okay. That's going to be a 17. What's the DC? Yeah. It's a 12 plus five. I'm sorry. Saves. Is yeah. Saves. You have another attack. Uh huh. I'm going to do that. Still have advantage, right? You do. Man, it would be really awesome when that monk ability that's like the core of my class actually works. Uh, 17 plus 7. That hits. Go okay. ahead and roll damage for that. Second strike with your staff. Six. All right, six. That's. Yeah. Plus another four. Right, so so ten, 10 total. total. Sorry. All right, so it takes mm-hmm. five points of damage mm-hmm. as the second strike is still somewhat deflected by the armor of its body. Can I do. Um, 
And since I have two hits, can I do extract aspects? Spend you a can. key point? So you spend a key point, uh, since we have uh, kind of changed or eradicated it. You do, it does not make a saving throw, you just get to learn. I get to learn two things now? At level six, you get to learn two things. Okay. Learn one right can I learn its lowest saving throw ability? Uh, the lowest saving throw ability it has would be charisma. <laughs> <laughs> Useless. <laughs> Not against some spells. Yeah. Hey Molly, you want to mock this happens. asshole to death? I think it would still go poorly, but let's see. We'll if, if it comes to it. Okay, I'm gonna take my last attack. Okay, go for it. Still at advantage, right? Yep. Okay, I hit with a 15 plus seven, so that hits. 22. All right. And then I have d6 now. Uh, five damage. Five Roll damage. One. Reduced to two. All right. This time you do him hit with your fist no. again, and it scrapes through the armor, and you're kind of bleeding at the knuckles from the impact. Ouch. It's just hard to break through its shell. Feeling so useful, this you is, guys. This is a rough fight for a monk at level five, unfortunately. Um, I got a crazy idea. The finish your turn, Bo? Um, <laughs> poor Caleb. Yeah, I'm going to stay exactly where I am. I'm going to stay exactly where I am. Okay. The finish is Bo's turn. Not Molly, you're up. You first, please. I'm just gonna scoot around and fire a crossbow at it. Go for it. That's a 15 plus seven to hit. That hits, go ahead and roll damage. Uh, is it within melee and stuff? It is. Um, well, that wasn't good at all. <laughs> hey, Mo. Um, so that's eight. Eight points of damage. Uh -huh. All right, reduced in half because it is an unmanned source. Yeah, that's that is four awesome. Four points of piercing. There to you it. go. The, the bolt disappears through I'll its armor. I'll use my fury of the small. Okay. That's another five points. Are you okay. using my another... friend's success to try and make me feel better? No, he actually only did four points. Uh, uh, Sam only did All right. four. Oh, oh you're so trying to use my friend's fury. The bolt to make impacts and, is, yeah. and pierces through most of the armor and gets stuck there. It gets kind of stuck in some of the gears and you see some sparks or, from the know, inside, the but it uh, doesn't fully pierce its shell. Hmm. <laughs> Terrible. Um. I will. Jeez, I can't really do anything. You know what? I'll take out my last burning bolt. That oh, might be magical. Yeah. Load it up and fire that. Go for it. That is a magical bolt. Uh, ooh, but that doesn't hit. Yeah. <laughs> I just wasted it. It's four, <laughs> fourteen. <laughs> the bolt the bolt doesn't impact. It just kind of glides off the armor. It lands somewhere in the distance. You don't know if it's retrievable or not yet. Damn it. It's impossible right. to take you seriously. What are you talking about? I know, I really like, I can't even. <laughs> I'm having like, 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 I'm rooting for not, and then I just look at you and I feel weird. Yeah. <laughs> Molly, you're up. Um, uh, I'm going to duck back a little bit. Oh, you're going to duck back a little yeah. bit? Um, I'm going to run in and, and try and do a little bit more damage in here. So, uh, Alrighty. I'm, uh, I'm coming in and, and taking three more shots. So. Go for it. Yeah! Oh. I got it. It's all good. Um, that one misses. All right, so you move in mm -hmm. to that moment there. Go for it. Uh, that one hits. That's a 19, so. All right, so, a... so first strike just dodges. All right, kind of moves out of the way. The second strike actually makes an impact, so makes go ahead and roll for that. And that's, uh, um, let's see what this is at. Let's do, uh, come on. Yeah, that's okay. Um, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. That's 12 points of damage. 12 points of damage. All righty. Carves through the second strike and the. Fight. Uh, and for a third, slightly less exciting attack. Uh, natural ah. 20. Uh -huh. <laughs> this, is, this is your offhand, so it's not a magical weapon. It, uh, it's, but it's magicked up. Correct. So the so the extra right damage is magical. The but actual blade, blade will still be half. Okay, that's fine. So, um, so roll roll the d6 up. for your for your blade. Mm-hmm. Get that's uh, two plus uh, to three, so that's five. Five reduced to two, so two damage plus this doubled. Well, no, uh, no sorry, the two was doubled, so it's because it was a crit. Oh, so, so then four plus three or just seven back to five. So, sure, we'll go. So five damage, and then and then six because this is doubled. So eleven points of damage. All right, you're watching now. The armor is reduced to sixteen. As yeah. you're carving away at its armored shell, it's starting to look pretty hurt. It's starting to kind of. You see, like, like it shifting rapidly, trying to figure out its situation and tactically maneuver best it can. Um, I'm gonna see if I can hop back up out of. Uh, am I ever getting out of melee, or am I not getting out of melee when it's a? Uh... If you back all the way up to here, you can, or all the way up to the It'll top. You'll still here, get an attack of opportunity on me. Though, yes, it will. Without disadvantage now. At the moment, no. Um. Yikes. Uh... 
You know, I'm I'm gonna stick around for now. Okay. I'm just gonna make sure that I'm just gonna keep a flanking a flanking point, and I'm, I just want to make sure that I'm like, um, yeah, I'm just gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna move a little bit so that we're like spread out around it, so it has to make you some decisions. It. Can you, he use the rest of his movement to work on his jester accent? Sure. That's cool. that's gonna be a lot of movement. Uh, Caleb and Jester, you're up next. So Caleb, you're currently pinned to the wall. You're muted. Oh. Also, I can't hear you. <laughs> what comes after Jester and I in the uh, Yasha does? Order? Yasha does, and then the thing? Yes. Yasha, Ford, and then the thing. And and Jester is with you. Yeah, I know. Okay, so uh, I am having trouble uh, thinking straight because there is a a, a blade through my gut and or ribcage, so I just grasp the cat's paw again. I don't try to pull myself loose, and I cast Max Earth and Paw again. Again? Okay, then. Yeah. Strength save. Strength save as the paw reaches out once more to grab it. That is a, a 19. That saves. 14, 14 plus 5. Sorry, man. Fine. All righty. So, so the paw, you're still maintaining concentration, but it did not seem to grasp it at this moment. All right. That ends Caleb's turn. Jester's up. Um, no, 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 no. Don't do that. Don't go back. Sorry, keep going. Oh, yeah. Um, try no, no, something I, I'm defensive just, uh... or something healing based, do you think? Uh, how, how, how are you doing, Caleb? Bad. Hmm? Bad. Bad. Okay, so unless we're going to do this, we're going to run out and cast Healing Word on, on Caleb. Okay, so step back through the doorway Caleb. right there. Uh, yeah, and it's what level? A, uh, level one. Cause All right, so a d4 plus four to, um, uh, to Caleb? Uh, yes, 1d4 plus four. Uh, so that's seven points of, of. So Caleb, you heal seven points. Yes. That's bonus action from uh, from Jester. What's next? Um, you can only sorry. use you can only use a uh, a cantrip since you've cast a bonus action spell. So, um, so I can. Also, the spiritual weapon. Spiritual weapon is a bonus action. You already used the healing word, unfortunately. But I can use it in my action for the bonus action. It doesn't work that you way. You can't. You can't up a bonus action to an action. No. Man. Um, I'm gonna try something. Oh, so I can't cast anything higher than level one either, can or I? Or a cantrip. Or a cantrip. I can only cast cantrip at this point. Right. Okay. I would have done that in the reverse order if I've been thinking about things. Well, what do I got? I've got. Uh, oh. But Caleb's um, healed a little bit. Uh, Caleb's healed, and that's good. Um, a little bit. Let's. I mean, do we want to yeah. try? Or do you think? Um, yeah, I think I say give it a go. Oh, uh, let's try. Toll the dead. All righty. Constitution saving throw. Um, Toll wisdom the saving dead. throw. The Wisdom the for Toll the Dead? Uh, you, you, <laughs> you point at one creature you can see within range and the sound of his uh, voice says you succeeded a Wisdom saving throw or take 1d8. It is Wisdom, you are right. Uh, so that would put it at a 14, because it has no Wisdom modifier. Oh, um, 15. So it, 15, so it takes the damage. Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, and it's, if the target is missing any of its hit points, it instead takes 1d12 necrotic damage. Yes. Whoa. So, so. But you're level five, so technically. No, it's what technically. It's, I mean, it's, a, it's a fifth level character, 2D12. so it's 2d12. It's uh, technically. technically. All right. Uh, that's Ooh, 17 that points of necrotic bad damage. Bad for yes. a cantrip. Boom. It's oh, really good. Hey, it's not too bad. Not too bad. Um, not too bad. All right. Uh, that's going to finish Sister's turn. She want to move. Um, okay, I got it. I got it. I I, mm-hmm. I think she's gonna gonna back up again. Uh, back up again. Back into the door. Yeah. You got it. So Jester's like just in the yeah. side there. All right. Finishes Jester's go. Yasha, you're up. Oh boy. Okay. Oh boy. So I am going to attack with my. The top of your turn, you take blade damage That's because right. of your proximity to it. That's ten. You take ten points of piercing damage. So five? reduced to five. Reduced to five. You're so you're 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 a, you're a beast. You're great. <sighs> okay. 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 Um. All right, so, question. Yes. I would like to use, try to use the dispel magic portion of my magician's now? judge. I don't know, is that bad? Is I don't know, can you get in there? Is the, is the, is the guts exposed? Does, does, is, is there enough gut to hit? I mean, there are a couple of pockets where like, you can see inside of it, but you don't see the power source. It's, okay. it's risky. Okay, I'm gonna wait. You're gonna wait? I'm gonna wait. Okay, so you're just taking a strike with it? Taking a you strike. have an advantage because you're flanked with bow. Okay. I think that's uh, the best thing I've done this whole fight. Roll again. He's flanking. 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 Some, yeah. Some fights aren't yep. great for every class, I'm sorry. Uh, 19. 19 hits? Go ahead and roll 16 to hit, so that's not bad. Yep, 16 AC. Okay. Uh, Seventeen points. Seventeen points. Ooh. All right. Carving past with the blade. You have a second strike if you'd like. 
I would like. Does that also have advantage or no? Yeah, it is because you're flanking. Okay. Ooh. God, over uh, and over again. Uh, 22. Yeah, that hits. Go and roll damage again. Okay. 16. Whew. 30. 33 points of damage. Ooh, yeah. Yeah, she doesn't miss around. All right, that finishes your turn. Yes. All right, Ford's up. Okay, Ford's gonna walk up. Yeah, I'm a warlock. And he's going. That's what he sounds like. Yeah. Hang on. First, he's gonna do. That's all I hear. I I don't think this is a concentration thing. It's a bonus action. He's gonna do hex blades curse. Correct. You can do that. It's yep. pronounced hex. Hex blades curse. Gears. So much fun to make fun of him when he's not here. No. I don't he know. It, I think you need a, at some point you may need another mustache. I feel like I gain mustache. a bonus <laughs> oh, no. to damage yeah. rolls that equals my proficiency Truly modifier. Yeah. So additional it's three damage yeah. per strike. Three da- damage. Oh, pretty good. Should have done this forever ago. Yeah, but now you know. But I don't you know. learn the classes I'm you go. I'm not a warlock. I'm a, exactly. And uh, first attack. First Still attack. with advantage, right? Uh, no. Oh, you're not flanking flank. with anybody. Oh, you're not flanking with anybody. No. Oh, he's not. He is it's not. Just you have to be directly across Yasha and I. So first attack with the with the. Uh, the falchion. Plus Go seven. It. So there's two attacks there. Uh, oh wait, sorry, but I'll take it. Those That's first two attacks, attacks, 17 and 14. Yeah, both would hit. So go ahead and roll damage on each. So D8 plus D8 plus six. D8 plus seven on each attack plus a D6 on each. So go ahead and roll that. Six plus seven, so 13, 13 the for the first one. Uh, same 13 on the second one. Nice. It's starting to look pretty rough now. As parts of it's like kind of breaking it down a bit, and you see it start, it's shaking, and you see little sparks on the inside as uh, gears are starting to connect, but they're not supposed to, and grind against each other. Uh, does that finish Ford's turn? Yeah, okay, can you back up again? <laughs> uh, five feet or ten? Ten. Mm. One more, and I'll take an attack of opportunity. Up to you. I mean, if he does an attack of opportunity, if I move forward back, then we get a sentinel strike, right? Technically, if he takes it. Technically. Yeah, let's do it. Sorry, Ford. He hasn't taken any damage. He hasn't taken any damage. Okay. Step back. He Ford. sells armor of Agathus. Step back. Actually, let's, yeah, step, let's step all the way back. Might as well, because you can roll, run back there. We can I think that's as far as he can go movement speed wise. Uh, that, no, he moved back further than that. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Uh, it's not going to take an attack of opportunity. Oh. It's currently focused on everything else around it. What? Faster. Okay, 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 okay. All right, it's that's smart. A, that finishes Ford's turn. Yes, it does. All right, God damn it. this entity is going to go ahead and attempt to shift back this way. I think it's spinning in place. To there, which who's, means that's that's going to mean bow because it moves back and pushes the uh, bow and Molly both get attacks of opportunity. Do you get to try and do make I get, it not. Do I get one? You do not, because it's still in melee with you. Do you get do to I try and make it not move. She does. I do. Do I so. still get advantage because flank? No, because it's moved out of that range. Okay. Yeah, that's a 17 plus 7, so 24. 24 hits, so go ahead and roll damage. It does not move. Um, BB. <laughs> that's an 8 on an 8 plus 4, um, so 12 damage. 12 reduced to 6. Got it. And he does not move. Nope, he gets stuck there. The bane of all I don't, gems everywhere. I don't, I don't still get to take my attack of opportunity, even though that no, happened. No, he did not mm, technically move out of it. Uh, it's sticky. It's, it's right. one of those weird things where he doesn't technically move beyond the range, but he tries to. He tried to, and I'm uh, trying to make it happen. Uh, I'll let you have it, sure. Right. No, no, I'll take no advantage. Just You have no advantage. Okay. Okay. I thought <laughs> I might be flanked, so. <laughs> Currently, no, you need something right, right in that there. corner to flank. That's fine, I'm up there. <laughs> uh, that's a 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 20, 20, 24 to hit. Roll damage. Mm-hmm. That's uh, dual sentinel. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. That's nine points. Of, that's nine points of damage. It's the first thing I've done all damn fight. Oh no! So five, six, yeah, nine. Well, it angrily is going to go ahead and open to do its shrapnel blast. Yeah. Okay. Where? Uh, to. Oh no! Oh no! Here we go. Ford. It was that powerful. Um, so I need Molly, Bo, Ford, and Caleb, 
and uh, technically Jester as well. Oh, she really but is. She yeah, she's behind yeah, the door. Sure. She well, she's not. She didn't close the door there. She stepped into the space behind to maintain eye contact. Open the door okay. on your mystery date. Yeah, so that'll uh, that'll. Caleb, deck you have to save. make a deck save. Deck save. Deck save, please. All right. Uh, Twenty. Yes. That's a success. Wow. That is a failure. Roll a nineteen. Um, oh, that's a dex save. <laughs> Twenty-two for me. Success. Uh, oh, you don't know it there. Not. Uh, try to I just spun myself there? like a uh, pinwheel. Uh, Ford, Jester. Ford and Jester, if you could. Uh, uh, Ford. Uh, Marsh should do one for Ford. Don't fight. Uh, Ford ten. Gill. Oh, good, good. Uh, Seventeen for Ford. Ten, ten for Jester. Okay, so everyone saves seven. except for Ford. Uh, it's 27, Jester. 27 Jester. points of piercing, sorry, uh, Jester. 27 points of piercing damage Oof. halved uh, to be 13 points of piercing damage do to I everybody. Uh, you, you rolled a... 14. A 14, no, you do not, so you, you take the full 27 Oof. points of piercing okay, damage. Okay, so 14 points of piercing damage. 13. 13 points. I had no, 27 no, no. hit points yeah. left. 13 for you. No shit. 27 for Jester. Bo's unconscious. 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 Again. How about you, K? KK? Low. 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 Okay. Low. Still pinned. Uh, Ford took a. Oh, sorry, Jester took a full 27. How's she? Jester took a full 27? Well, she rolled low for her dexterity. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so, yeah. Okay, 27 okay. points of damage. Um, and then so is 13. That the whole, or did you not do the whole thing? All right. I'm up. I'm fine. All right. And that's, that's its action. <laughs> it is locked in place and it can't move. It's speed is zero, frustratingly. All righty. Uh, what is, what is and Caleb, you should make another concentration check, please, from the damage you took. So, uh, and what? Nothing's up. Uh, I thought your, your your other cat hand. That failed last time. It failed, but isn't it? Constant, it? Doesn't can you can you still try it every turn after, point? or is it a one time cast no, thing? Uh, it, that's it can break out of use the strength save to break out of it, and it exists. But if I fail my concentration check, it goes right. But you've recast it. Didn't the you? second time, it succeeded immediately. Right, uh, but when you create it in space, it stays there. It just stays there. Yeah, and then as an action, you can cause it to try and do things. So they break out the restraint target. Great, well, great. Then that means it's just back. standing there. Right. Well, make concentration, make a concentration check to see if you maintain the spell. Yes, sir. So uh, higher than a ten. Uh, Twelve. Twelve. All right, you succeed. You maintain concentration. All right. Already, All right. that finishes his turn. Bo. You're up do first. thing you do, Bo. Um, well, Bo first takes uh, Roll a death saving throw? That is uh, the thing I do. Well, they don't have to roll. You take damage from proximity to it, so you automatically fail a death saving throw Whoa. from the blades carving into your now unconscious body oh. nearby. Do I roll again? Mm. Yeah, we're going to have to potion it. Can okay, I take a roll I just used? Yeah, because you're rolling your death saving throw. 14. Yeah, so you, you, you're, that's, a, that's a failure and a success. All right, that brings us to uh, not Molly. Uh, you want to go first? Um, sure. Got any thoughts? I mean, I don't have much, so I'll just walk up there, poke around the corner, shoot a crossbow bolt, do my thing. Alrighty. That's a big hit, 25. It'll do, go ahead and roll uh, damage with sneak attack. Ugh. Should've brought more tar. <laughs> 10, halved. Five points of piercing damage on the first strike. That's terrible. Do you want a bonus action attack as well, or? I guess, I mean, these t attacks are so weak. Um, just don't know what else to do. She can bonus this in We need I don't have anything weapons. else to do. Yeah, I guess I'll shoot another one. Why not? That hits. 23. 23, go ahead and rest 1d6 plus. That's another six points halved. Yeah, to three, all righty. It still sparks are flying, it's starting to shake. Uh, Molly, top of your turn, the swirling blades uh, spin around and you take eight points of slashing damage. Oof. It's your turn. Four, five, six, seven, eight points of slashing damage. Oof, that's rough. Um, okay, I'm going to take two swipes at, uh, and I'm going to try and move, um, I'm going to try and move somewhere where I'm flanking. Uh, is there any flanking available at the moment? Uh, at the moment, for you, if you move over Bo's body. <laughs> um, so that would be probably a... Uh, it's a tough call. I mean, I'll, I'll let you do it. 
Uh, if you want to, you'll be standing over her, her, her unconscious can body. I, yeah, I was about to say, is in any way that going to give give her a little cover at the very least? Mm, no. Probably not. Um, I'll move in and then move around. Well, no, God damn it. Um, it's up to you. Um, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take a couple shots and see how this goes. Go for it. Um, take those shots, yeah, Molly. Yeah, because I could use, I could use some hits that are all right. So, <laughs> those shots, yeah. Molly, Ma. That's what we're doing. <laughs> uh, first hit. Don't throw away your shot. I'm not throwing away my shot. That's a 22 to hit. That hits. Let's hit the, that first thing. That's a. Uh, Seven, eight, 12 points of damage. 12 points of damage, already. Next strike. Next strike. Um, that's definitely a hit. That's you know, it's like 24 to 24. Yep, good roll damage on this one. Um, six, seven, that's 10 points of damage. 10 points of damage. How do you want to do this? Oh! <laughs> So lucky. Um, so the blades are spinning. I'm just gonna go and I want and I've, and I've got that one really soft blade and I'm rolling it and I want to just I want to see that like one little opening and I want it to bend. The sword just bends and like it does that 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 Chinese martial art thing where it goes and just pops all the way into the center of it. My I go like I go wrist deep into the thing. The edges of the armor kind of scrape against your flesh, kind of pushing and cutting past skin, causing blood to just drip down your arm. But this is a natural state for you. And as the arm pushes into the center, there's a flash of blue light in the interior of its armored shell. You see uh, as this, it's almost like a, like a glow on the inside of a cracked dark orb. As you see all the, all the individual sections where the plate armors meet suddenly just glow with bright, vibrant blue-white light and then go dark. And the whole metal object kind of hits the ground, all the legs go limp, and it just kind of rolls a little bit to one side, now inert and no longer functioning as a construct. <gasps> oh. That was a Chow yes. Yun Fat moment. I got a new tiger. Maybe. Apparently, does it, does it look familiar, motherfucker? Oh, <laughs> is it the snitch? It's the it's it's the it's the, the nega snitch. The nega snitch. <laughs> where did you get that? I found the place where the snitch came from. I had the one make make me one out of iron. Iron. Wow. I love it. Really cool. Boom, motherfucker. Snitch. We'll see how we'll see how it fares. It's been middle late, but done okay today. Yeah. X versus Gil, seven. Gil has been a has been a help today. <laughs> Already. So, as you all take a moment. Uh, <gasps> Bo is bleeding oh, out. No, okay, immediately, so we're going to roll. We're immediately going to help. Yeah, Jester yes. runs up. Yeah. Oh, Jester oh. runs up and casts Cure Wounds. Does she yeah, have lay on, Cure she, Wounds? She, she, yeah, we got um, first level lay on hands. At first drug. level, because I feel like that's what she would do. <laughs> we're really getting tired of this dying thing. Oh, I guess the unconscious so well. thing. Yeah. No, really. I mean, that was, they did some good stuff, and they kept, you, you, you <coughs> kept, it, you kept it sitting. Yasha. Uh, yeah. Could you please come cast? Pull this lamppost out oh, of my stomach. Yes. <laughs> yes, I go over and I'm I, I, uh, here. Yeah, she kind of puts her foot up on the wall and with one big yank, she pulls it out of oh. your torso, Caleb. Uh, it was <clears throat> kind of about two inches from the side of your body and thrust through your abdomen. You begin to bleed, but uh, Jester comes over and helps close up that wound before you bleed out too much further. <gasps> I'm gonna uh, run back here. and see what was back over here. there. You get a, okay. yeah, I want to take a look in the other room too and give them a proper look. <clears throat> All right, glancing into the chamber, uh, ooh, that, that, that is another closed gate that is bent inward from the repeated slamming of this centurion trying to make its way in. Looking past the inside, you see what looks to be four decomposed bodies I that are also. Awesome. Leaving at 12? The thing? 12 Go hit points. Make, uh, a, uh, make an attempt to do so. Leave me get 10 hit points uh, and you get 12. Dope! Can I Who gets what now? You get ten. I get twelve. Thirteen. From Chester. Thirteen. From Chester. It's it's not these prison yeah, locks are just a pain in the butt. You haven't encountered something quite yeah. so heavily fortified as these these cells. Just Caleb, I need you to come open this door. I'm gonna walk over to the door and start <clears throat> beating it with a sword. Could I go look in the okay, area? Make a strength check. Mm. Or you, you can't can't dex cut this thing. Can't just pop it in with the mouth. You have to force it. I need it. you to come kick. Kick in this door. Well, if this big thing couldn't kick it in, how I'm that? coming. They're bigger. Uh, eight. Eight. It is no. not budging. Yasha. In spirit. I believe in, in you. Heart. Okay, I'll come try to open the door. All right. You go over, see where Molly has failed, and you go to try and fill that void. Go ahead and make a strength check. I believe in you. I believe. Oh, wait. <laughs> oh. No, go ahead. <laughs> It's not gonna budge. I, I'm gonna use this, Matt. I'm gonna try to bend fate and try to re-pick the lock. Okay. 
It's a little <laughs> late, but I'll allow it, early. sure. I know. <laughs> Why not? Go for it. That's a lot. <laughs> it's 26. 26, okay. Uh, and as Yasha comes forward and slams her foot into it, it jostles the lock just enough for you to slip past the tumblers. And with a it opens a few inches in the inside. The bottom of it is scraping against the stonework. The way it's been bashed and bent has actually kind of forced it out of the uh, the frame of the door. And it, it's going to take a bit more force to push it open enough to move inside, but you managed to do the so. The three of us will, will get that door yeah. open. Yeah, Caleb just... stops mid semantic gesture and says, Oh, fuck this, and goes back to the first door and has a short rest. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to, Bo is going to deliriously, kind of still really messed up, kind of like a drunk person um, doing a pointless task, is going to try and scoop up some ball bearings that she threw. <laughs> and, and then after, like, maybe she picks up like make, 10. Make an investigation check. Okay. I. One day we'll get you Sorry. a magnet. Sorry. Uh, Sorry. Yeah. Uh, 12. How many ball bearings did you throw out? I tossed my my baggie, my. Your entire bag. My pouch. All right. And kind of did one of these things. Okay. So I'm going to get my pouch back. You get your pouch and then... back, and you manage to scoop up. You have, we'll say, 814 ball bearings. Oh. Okay. <laughs> And then after, like, I. Most of which, because it's such a ridiculous item. Deliriously tired of scooping oh. up all bearings, I'm going to stumble back and collapse next to Caleb and also take a short rest. Okay. May I go over and see the room where this thing was staying in on the sure, other side? Sure, so you make your way to the opposite end. I'm with you in that room. Are the bodies? Make an investigation check. I'm with this I'm good at. One. <laughs> 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 You find, you find, at first you think it's like dried compost, but you eventually realize, no, it's it's just very old human excrement. Uh, um, at some point we'll, we'll cast Detect Magic into a hole. You found prison poop. Prison poop, old prison poop. Yes. Uh, Yasha, you head off to the other side where the gate is open, and as you go inside, you can see the interior of this chamber is scraped up as the rest of them from where this, this, this Sentry was attempting to just scan and break out. Um, on the inside, make an investigation check. Okay. The first time for you? I, I think it is. <laughs> <laughs> 11. 11, okay. Looking around on the inside, uh, you you take a glance, and, and there are these little pieces of things everywhere, some hard, some soft. And you start pulling it up, and you notice that a lot of these are just tiny, Torn slivers of blanket, or sheet, or pillow, and then the other hard pieces are tiny shards of bone. Whatever, whatever uh, prisoners who were in here who could not keep this at bay, their remains have been time and time again ground, battered, and destroyed by this oh, creature as it ran through, and it has torn apart their bedding and their bodies. But beyond that, nothing else of interest. Back at the uh, front gate, leaning against Beauregard. Uh, what is that? Is that, is that your blood? I don't know. Or is that mine? It might be yours. It's hard to tell. Ford, Ford kind of, Ford pats you on the shoulder uh, next to you uh, and goes, hey, I just want to let you know, I appreciate what you did. Taking the brunt of it, because, uh, didn't even hurt me. That's very true. I'm gonna remember that. And that's makes because sense. of you. <laughs> You're the best for it. I know. Mm. Alrighty. So, what else are you guys doing? Should, should we retrieve the like the magic core or yeah. anything as proof of what we did here? Yeah. I mean, the fact that we're gonna leave the door open is not coming up. But yeah, we'll we'll go get the core. And I figure we'll we're gonna do a thorough investigation of the whole thing once once Caleb can do a detect magic. Okay. Just to make sure we uh, while, while Caleb's <laughs> taking a moment to finish his short rest, um, you begin to kind of peer inside and pull back some of the loosened armor plates. Now, now that there's the machine is not open, there's not tension holding it together, and you now see that each of these armored plates on the inside are attached to its own kind of uh, arm-like pole. And so, once it had collapsed, all the armor plates kind of went limp and fell open. 
So it's almost like a tension-held bit of armor that it could expand and like push out different areas to Whoa. leave openings and then retract it again. Whoa. It's a pretty ingenious design, and you can see why uh, Tinkertop is a talented man, though flawed sometimes in his designs. Uh, this is pretty, pretty revolutionary. For it's like a contracts. weaponized version of one of those balls that you throw up in the air and it turns inside out. Similar to yeah. that, I guess you could say. Um, <laughs> so looking inside, it's just it's hundreds of these little poles and like gears and, and little uh, servos, and, and a lot of them are ground and bent and damaged from the impact that you left inside. And there in the center, you see uh, a cracked open and partially destroyed, looks like a, like a bluish crystal sphere. Uh, that was where your final blow impacted to destroy it. Keep cutting off the arm so we can get to it and just just slowly. Okay, make eventually, it like, and it's like yanking and bending pieces and pulling them out, and ping, things are on the inside uh, with the damage you've done. It's not too hard to kind of pry a few off, uh, but you managed to get to it, and there is like the the, the cracked and shattered crystal core. Mm -hmm. um, a couple questions. So, I really like some of the armor pieces that he has on his shoulders, mm -hmm. like with the skulls and things. <laughs> Is that just part of his? That's just part of the miniature. That's that, that, that was my, my representation for it. That did not have a mini of a okay. of a the spherical ball a made of map. armor. I'm sorry. It's the best I can real do for, for size and intimidation. <laughs> been very busy. Didn't have time to make an entire mini of okay. tiny spherical metal what ball covered in blades. Sorry, no, it's fine. It's yeah, fine. Yeah, what do you even do? Mustache yeah, traveling. D and D. Well, let's take the, this stuff back up to the warden. We've had a short rest. Do you want to do a quick, and we'll do a quick search once you're, can you, can you do a detect magic spell, Caleb? Uh, yeah, I have a little bit left in me. Malemok, will you help me up, please? Oh, yeah, no, come on, that's all right. No, he's my pillow. No, nope, fuck no, you, Molly. Go fuck no, yourself, Bo. Come on. Uh, okay. All right. Follow so, me at the thing. Line. So you do a, a scan of Detect Magic through the room over the next uh, 15 minutes or so, you do a, a, a thorough pass around. Uh, nothing magic catches your attention. I mean, most of the interior here is, uh, actually, no, that's not true. Very faint magical auras from two uh, kind of ember light torches that are on the wall, that mm -hmm. faint red light that you've mm -hmm. seen. It's essentially a very low light, ever-burning torch. I uh, turn to Molly Mock and say, yeah, the only thing magical is here is you, friend. Pat, pat on the cheek. And then I uh, wander back over to Baragod and I go to sleep again. All right, come on, we're going to get you guys out of here. We're, we're going to go. Uh, okay. Mm. All right, you pick yourselves up and you make your way back to the heavy no. metal door, which on this side, as you're looking at it, you can see the heavy no. scraping across it as this, this ball has also been pushing repeatedly into this one exit point. Um, as you approach, it is still closed and presumably locked. Oh. We're done! Let us out! Guards! You hear some shifting behind it, and eventually you hear the familiar grinding of chains against metal. <laughs> it opens slightly, and the guards kind of peer out. You're alive. I'll hold up the glowing crystal. You should see the other one. <laughs> <laughs> Go check it out. And then a few like the Gnomish guards kind of push past and head down. Uh, another one of the Gnomish guards goes, Well, fucking I. <laughs> is it done? And you hear voices go, and you guys watch as the other gnomes kind of rush past and say, Sure enough, they killed the thing. It's like, oh, All right. Um, let's lead you back to our boss. Come on, follow me. Uh, uh, go just goes, I just oh, it took a lot out of us. Yeah. Oh, and I pass out in Yasha's arms. <sighs> okay. Yasha. I just, I, do I buy you this? You have to carry me. I got you, I got okay. you. Okay. <laughs> Fireman carries you. Oh. <laughs> I kind of wanted to have an insight versus deception check on you. Make an insight check. All right. I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna mess with you, I just want to know. I, um. I, um, nope, that's an eight, unless you roll really poorly. Um, as I'm holding her, I will, uh... Yeah, roll boy better. All right. <sighs> I'll cast uh. healing hands. Aww. <gasps> okay. Just give so go ahead and roll for Deep that. Deep tissue. Yeah. Um, as an action, <laughs> regain number of hit points equal to your level, so... All right. You... Gain five hit points. extra five hit points. 
I mean, we feel so warm inside. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, Come on, not. Mm, <laughs> Sorry. Mm, mm, All right. How many hit points? Five. 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 Okay. All right. Five. On our way out, do I see my bolt anywhere? Make an investigation check as you glance around the space. Twelve. Twelve. Uh, because it's a small space, uh, you do manage to oh, recover it. Uh-huh. So you get one bolt back. Mm-hmm. It did not trigger. Oh my god! So it only triggers if it hits. Do you have two? If, if it seems if it hits, it's a target, uh, an intended target possibly, or something hard enough. You rolled low enough where it didn't seem to to truly okay. impact. So okay. Mm-hmm. All right. Make a Fu Manchu check. <laughs> you guys slowly make your way, guided back by the various guards of the Gearhole Prison, to the office of the Warden Helm, where both Rissa and her father are waiting. Uh, as they walk in. Um, you uh, glance over and can see Clef. He's like, uh, "Yo, uh, how did it go? Any luck with the thing?" Oh, you—you you broke it. We did. We may need that later, sadly. I i am simultaneously impressed and kind of sad, but impressed mostly. It, it, it did work us over quite well. It was an incredible device. It really was. You, you could have told us that the eye had a protective wind sh- wind, windshield wiper device. It's more for when it's raining, or, or you know, I didn't think it would be for tar, but good to know. Takes another note in his little his little pad. I'm gonna I'm gonna take the crystal back just because I'm so sorry we may need this. At this point, you see turning in in the office uh, vicinity, mm-hmm. uh, the warden helm pop and turns. So, it appears uh, my guards say that you are successful in this. That is very good. I am impressed. Uh, what is your names, if I might be of curious? We're the Mighty Nine. The Mighty Nine, mm-hmm. all right. Good to know that the Mighty Nine can be relied upon in such situations. Uh, are you staying in town for quite a while? I don't know how long we might be staying in town, so maybe we should go ahead and talk about that deal while we're here. Right, right. Um, while you were down there, I got approval for about uh, 200 gold from the Starosta for payment. I hope that is enough. Well, to get out the Schusters? Both of them? He doesn't know about the Schusters. Oh, but you talked about getting people out. Nope. nope. Yeah, you did. We, nope. we mentioned vaguely that we might want something. Oh, I'm so curious as to what you're referring to. So we have some friends that are currently, uh, I believe, in, uh, interred here uh, for um, financial troubles. Nothing, nothing uh, dangerous. Nothing, uh, nothing violent. And we were wondering if we could make a deal for maybe some leniency, if that's possible. I'll take that 200 gold. Consider it their bail and time served. Also, we do have. A bit of the mechanism, and with if everybody here is all right, I'm of the opinion that really, if anybody asks us, it was your brilliant idea to let us into that cell in the first place to take care of this problem. Totally. If anybody asks, yeah, we know who is absolutely responsible for this. Yes, yes. You picked us it specifically. Pop and Drill Crusher. You saw something yeah. in us. Pop and Fresh. You took a chance, and we're grateful for it. And this guy will agree to that. Right, Clef? And I kind of elbow Clef. <laughs> Of course, uh, it's a great deal. Well done. Uh, ooh, sternum is a bit of pain. Um, go ahead and make a persuasion check with advantage. All right, come on, man. Mm. Uh, for fuck's sake. Uh, that's that's a that's a six. Total? Six. Why? why I don't have any be? persuasion. I don't know why, like, why would you keep leading me? I know. <laughs> I don't know if anybody should pick up, but we don't have our talker here right now. No, you got a talker, but that's okay. Uh, yeah. he, he, he's, he takes a, a keen look at you, goes over and starts thumbing through papers, pulls, goes through his books, picks one, kind of thumbs through and goes, Schuster, Schuster, Schuster. All right, I found the report here. He turns the page. Hmm. That uh, looks like they were arrested for uh, false idol worship. That is not. Uh, this is not an undue uh, or minor offense. Just look at it this way. Uh, one path we could take is that you are the mastermind who hired the right people for the job, and everything is perfect. The other path, uh, we talk about how. We came in and fixed things you could not. The Schusters are still to serve a two-year sentence, both of them. Um, 
to pay the amount to bail them out would be, at this point, about 350 gold. With the 200 that were offered, that would put you at a 150 bail amount, should you wish to indeed pay for these very important friends of yours. Well, considering you have a hunk of metal down in your basement that's worth at least 100 gold worth of scrap, that I'm sure the assembly yard would love to have. And they will, because it's still technically commissioned originally by the prison, so we own the rights to its carcass. However, the moment of negotiation is over. This is my price, it stands. Either you receive the 200 and walk away, or you can continue to pay the bail and they will be released. That is up to you, yeah, I'm I a think, busy man. I think that's a fair deal. Uh, Jester, would you mind uh, settling this debt for us? Yeah, that's no problem. Jester will be happy to pay. <laughs> uh, 150 gold? 150 gold. Laura, Laura you can text right now. Oh, no. uh, that's okay. Laura, Laura will text if she has a problem with that. Oh, it's too late. Laura half since yeah. she's sympathetic. Uh, four, four will pay half, so 75 gold each. That's true. Yeah. All right. Four says, you know what? Gold, to keep Laura, them out of that or orphanage. Bond, you choose. Seven. Okay. So that's all right. Bump, bump. Oh, but, and look at that. It's all done. Look, that's all done. That happened. Look, look at that. that. It's beautiful. He's like, no <laughs> money was spent. <laughs> this is if it never was. Assholes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you for getting knocked up, man. Right there. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> At this point, uh, he. Those are expensive. He, kids are yeah. in yeah. deep financial it's true. Brain, man. It's true. Um, oh, he, man, don't he, I know he it. accepts the coin. Um, shouts out to. Uh, says, My cop! And this uh, uh, female halfling comes rushing in. Says, I would like for you to write a writ for me of uh, success in clearing the lower regions of the prison under the uh, watchful eye of the warden helm, Poppin uh, Drok Russia. I thank you. And also, uh, could we please have sent up immediately uh, an England sport? Gilda and Wally Schuster, they are on the second level in a cell. Uh, 12B, they have uh, been, uh, had their bail paid. Uh, the uh, halfling rushes off, some of the guards leave with her, and about 20 or so minutes later, you hear the footsteps uh, return, and there you see this, uh, this, this couple of, um, uh, they, they kind of pull forward, dirty, uh, kind of sallow, not very well, Fed but alive, and they both look kind of bewildered. Uh, the, the the man who's got like thick, thick graying brown scruff, and the hair a bit uh, a bit uh, shaken from his uh, his forming, kind of glances up at the rest of you. I I don't understand what's happening. It's all right. We never understand what's happening either. Gil, you, uh, Wallace. The woman looks over. And she has this. Long, kind of curled and tangled, uh, kind of brownish red hair. Uh, she says, is is this true? We're, we're we're free. Why don't we get outside and then we'll talk? Let's have a meat pie. <laughs> With that, uh, you guide the now no longer prisoners outside of the Gearhole Prison. And as the small door opens to lead them out into the late afternoon air, uh, the sunlight hits them, and you see them blink and wince, and then look up and smile, as this is probably the first sunlight they've seen in six months. Uh, you could see a bit of glimmer as tears begin to form at the edge of their eyes, and the two, uh, the couple, look at each other and smile and hold each other, and look back at the two of you, or the group of you, and say, "Ah." Uh, Thank you, but why? Let's just say your kids made an impression on us. Are they all right? Where, where, where are they? They're at your house, uh, the, the, <laughs> the, but, the butcher place. <laughs> Don't worry, we'll, we'll take you there. They're, they're being kept safe by a tiny bird with a dagger. <laughs> they look at you <laughs> and look both frightened by the words you say and then equally frightened by the creature they now realize that it's saying it, and go, right, um. Best not to think about it. 
Sometimes the people that help you are the least expected. I was going to say eclectic, but sure. No, I'll go with that. Yeah. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. And Gilda looks up. Thank and heavens for little blessings. <laughs> thank, thank you very much. Can we go to our children, please? Oh, please. Yes, yes, yes. Of course. With that, you guys all make your way back up the switchback path uh, to the idle works shelf. Just as the sun begins to hit the mountains, uh, the sky is turning to the uh, oranges and reds of the coming sunset. Um, at this point, the, uh, the people of the city begin to rise in energy once more as the whistles of a day's work come to a close. And the city begins to liven up once more into an air of celebration. Music blasting around you on all sides. It's like being in Vegas for more than 24 hours. You're like, no. Oh, we made a Not again. I can't do this for a third night in a row. Oh. Um, as you guys push through the streets now, the celebration expanding and exploding throughout the vicinity. You're still kind of lingering hangovers from the night before, mixed with your physically damaged selves, make you less jovial in this space. But eventually you make your way to the back to the location of the previously boarded up butcher shop. And at that point, it appears to be left alone, closed, locked, and as you left it. Well. Your your way was way more cool. It's us. Open it up. <laughs> you hear some shuffling, and then uh, the door opens, and you can see as uh, Austin and Gail look past and open the door. And as soon as uh, Gail can say, uh, "You're you're back," we, they look, and you can see they're. Parents right there just smile back at them. And with that, they just rush out, Gail and Austin, and just wrap their arms around their mother and father. Uh, behind them, kind of skittering, you see Layla and Jude look past, and they rush up as well and hold them. And now, this family unit of six all brought together again, as filthy as they may be uh, in their current uh, garb and lifestyle. Uh, just hold themselves amongst the glowing of distant fireworks going off, an unknowing celebration that the city holds for this family. Uh, behind, you see Kiri kind of shuffle out, see what's happening, and then also come forward and kind of put her arms around the family and looks back at you with a smile and goes, yes, I am a good girl. Oh, oh my goodness. <laughs> This could be. Uh, I think this is this very. Could be our chance. Advantageous. To find a good home for her. Yes. Yes. And Kiri like steps away from the group and looks at the rest of you and takes the dagger out and steps forward and goes. The mighty nine. <laughs> Kiri. You like these kids? Poor Kiri. Okay. Yeah. Did you have fun yeah. with them? You know, you spend enough time with us. Beauregard and I here almost died tonight. You're just a little girl. You should be playing with these kids, not playing with us. What about you, mom and dad? Uh, the, the, at this point, they're, they're, they're like barely paying attention. They kind of look back and say, I'm, I'm sorry, what? Uh, you have a request. A favor. In, In exchange. Uh, Beauregard. No, I mean, you were nailing it. You were kind of <laughs> doing a jinxies thing. Yeah. Ford kind of steps in next to you as well and goes, Yeah. Look, no children should be without their parents. And we're happy to. To have brought you back together. So be more careful. Make sure that if you 
or do anything that can put your kids at risk, don't. He looks over and defers back to you, Caleb. Uh, we uh, get into trouble quite a bit. I feel guilty bringing this young girl with us. And we've gone to great lengths to get you out, and all, well, I can't speak for the group, but all I ask is that you give this girl some parents. Board's right. No child should be separated from their parents. Unfortunately, this little one was. You see as the, the parents look at each other and none of the kids, and the little girl, Layla, with her kind of curled red hair, goes, does this mean she can stay? And looks over at Kiri, and Kiri kind of looks between them and you, and is kind of temporarily con conflicted and, and confused, but you can see kind of a bit of understanding wash over. Kiri goes ahead and reaches over and takes from her pocket the dagger and steps forward and kind of turns it around, handle forward, mm -hmm. and holds it out. You've learned. Yes, I am very sweet. <laughs> she reaches down instead and pulls out the uh, pulls out the music box and slowly kind of opens it after winding it. <laughs> yeah, she's a pretty good egg. Looks up at Caleb and rushes forward and gives a big warm hug. To, uh, to Gilda, no. to shit. I turned to Gilda and Wallace and uh, said, "Look, I, I know another mouth to feed. It's a lot. It would mean a lot if you take her, um, but we'll help you out." And I reach in and I, I give them fifty gold from my stash. Mm. Should be enough to kind of help for a little bit. Hopefully make up the difference. She kind of accepts it and wide-eyed. Uh, I don't know what to say. Well, I kind of stole 75 gold from my friend without him being here to speak for it, so I feel like it's fair. <laughs> <laughs> she kind of steps back and they look like they're in shock still, these strangers that have come to their aid so heavily. Um, Kiri pulls back and looks to you. Don't eat humans, okay? <laughs> Go give Jester a hug. I know she was she'd be here for it. <laughs> Jester, you see her arms like twisted up and just the eyes walked her in. She goes, We're going to come back, right? Yes, we'll, we'll come back and check on, on, on Kiri. Be a good girl, Kiri. She gives a big hug and says, Kiri, you're going to be uh, so beautiful as you grow up, and this family's going to take care of you, and it's, it's going to be your new mother and father, and they're going to have your whole family here for you, so just remember, no matter what's happening and what you're doing, uh, the traveler is always looking over you, and we are always, always, always thinking of you with love. And just kind of turns around, and you can see the kind of the tears welling up in her eyes. And I give Jester a hug. Just takes you in there. Ford kind of steps forward and ruffles the feathers in the head and says. 
You're always a member. Maybe one day you'll be able to come back and use that dagger for something that's alive. <laughs> Gary turns back and looks to you. Yeah, so what's his name? I, 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 don't, I, I mean, I guess everyone knows at this point, so it's, it's okay then. And just gives you a hug. Thank you for listening to us. Looks to Molly and kind of gives this kind of distant stare. I'm so glad we understand each other. Take care of them. <laughs> Take care of them. Mm. And looks to you and just kind of comes up and cuddles against your chest where she had slept the night before and kind of. Scratching those feathers. The feathers kind of. Fluff, fluff up. up a bit. Goodbye, Kiri. We will send you treasures from all of our travels. Okay. We will miss you very much. Kiri turns back and kind of steps aside the kids. And the family looks out and goes, if there's ever the opportunity to pay this back or forward, we will. Thank you. You already are. Look at this handsome lot. Look like you need to be a vinyl decal on the back of a minivan. <laughs> hey, what? I don't even know to go there. <laughs> More fireworks go off, and the whole family looks up again. And there's a moment where the uh, uh, the family is one single unit pulling Kiri into it. Gilda kind of looks at them and says, it's been a long time since I felt the need to celebrate. How about we all wash up and go out and take you for flowers? Mm -hmm. The kids brighten up excited and Kiri looks up and happily curiously looks back. And they all kind of shuffle into the house. Last look as Kiri kind of looks back over her shoulder I am Kiri. The door closes. <laughs> that felt really good, guys. It sure did. It's nice being good people. That might be the, the first nice thing I've ever done. But, uh, Explains why your face is doing that, I suppose. I don't know what this emotion thing is. It's weird. It's, it's not a good look on you. Oh, it's, it's probably <coughs> isn't. Ford, Come on, let's, let's Ford, go find a quiet place to sleep. I'm exhausted. Yeah. Ford, uh, as you're walking along back to your, your inn, goes, now I know you all did this because I asked you to. And you weren't sure if you wanted to. And I just want you to know that's, that's appreciated. You went out on a limb for me and these kids. And I'll remember that. Anyway, come on. So, as you guys make your way back <laughs> to a more solemn evening, the celebration is wild. The, uh, the Blushing Tanker Tavern is in the same crazy energy and music you possibly can expect, but you are too exhausted emotionally and physically. You get a drink, find your way back to your room, and crash out hard. Long rest. Long rest to you all. The next morning, you come to consciousness. Your first morning, not hungover, for a lot of you, <laughs> here in the city of Hubberduck. And now the city is yours to make your final business with. Oh. Um, that we can do more things in this city? Well, you haven't gone back to uh, the Tinker Top for oh, your half yes, of the deal. That's right. I guess we should go visit Clef. Get your, get your, uh, get your Tinker who Toy. Who says it's mine? It could be any of ours. I mean, mine's a Not. little busted, though, Not. so it would be nice. As you hold it up. Not. <laughs> can I I mean, I can fix that, probably. 
I'll take it away. <laughs> On the way, I look for someone who wasn't the guy who hated us before selling more of those poppers. <laughs> Because I want to stock up before we get out of this godforsaken town. Okay, yeah, you can get I tag two. along with Beauregard. All right, you get another set of 10. Another set of 10, yeah. I think it was two copper. I will only uh-huh. stop if there's something interesting in a window, otherwise, I figure we're heading back to pick up the, the crossbow. Yeah. Okay. Hey, Beauregard. Yeah, Caleb. That felt pretty good last night. Helping somebody. Oh, yeah. Do something good. Yeah, it wasn't too bad. I don't know I how. I get the sense that uh, you have bigger plans than that, even. Cobalt monk. I get a sense. Honestly, I don't really have a lot of plans. My entire life has been plans being made for me. So it's kind of nice not having plans. I ran away okay. from the Cobalt Soul, and uh, you know, I have ideas. I don't know if ideas would count as plans. Okay, well, that's just semantics. I have a feel about you. You and change. Uh, I don't think that you and I have the same plans. But I think they might overlap. And I would be willing to help you. I'd be willing achieve. to help you under one condition. Can we agree to keep each other straight? How do you mean? If either one of us tries to turn and do something stupid or uh, lean a little bit more evil, Evil. Chaotic, whatever you Surely want to call it. Surely neither of us are evil or a god. Anarchists. Uh, let's just okay. make a pact. If either one of us do anything stupid, that maybe we, uh, maybe we're each other's fail-safes. Yeah, I like that. I, I don't think I want to hurt any more people, and I don't think you do either. So maybe, uh, Maybe if we keep each other from hurting other people. That's not, that's not true. I do want to hurt people, just not people I like. Huh. Let's hurt bad guys. I think I can help you. I think you can help me. I think we can do some good here. Deal. Call it what you will. Deal. <laughs> Skype high five. Skype high five. five. Skype five. five. Can you? Can you? Skype force five. Do the. Give I me will a... do my best. That's a nice ghosting. Very solid. Awesome. <laughs> yes. As as that's happening, you guys have reached the exterior of uh, the 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 Tinker Top Inventions shop. If it was possible, just to buy some some food, also just for for the I want to have some camping food for the, for yeah, the rest. Yeah, just pick, like you, good stuff. All right, yeah. Um, so water. so so high quality provisions for the rest of the Vesh, trip. Ve- oh yeah, just really good food. Stews. Oh, you could just meat, veggies. Just mm-hmm. if you drop if you drop a solid like. Two gold. Done. You have you have good we're road eating, meals. That'll good. it'll last. It'll last to, oh, for the whole group. Yeah. For the whole group, put five gold down there. I'd Done. say, and you guys have some of the finest so fucking you. food you could have on the road going north. <clears throat> yep. I'm. I'm. That we're is good. We're gonna be eating really good. Yeah. That's good. <laughs> Alrighty. Thank you. So. Me too. On the outskirts uh, of the Tinker Top Inventions Shack, you make your way on the inside, and you see, uh, in the process of feverishly sketching out designs. See so uh, Clef Tinker Top kind of barely look up from his page. Oh, hello! Good to see you all again. <laughs> uh, 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 thank you, thank you for for helping with that. Uh, I I think based on uh, some of these new designs I'm coming forward, they they might be interested in a, a new version, perhaps a new design, perhaps a, an update, if you will, based on the notes you gave me. So here's to hoping. <laughs> oh, worth a shot. Worth a shot. 
don't know if a lesson was learned here, but all right, let's continue maybe, on. Maybe the lesson was for us, I'm yeah. not sure. Yeah. <laughs> Can I help you with anything? Um, well, I, I, we, we just came to say uh, goodbye. We're probably rolling out of town soon, and you know, I mean, if you had an extra crossbow lying around, we, <laughs> <laughs> right, right, sorry, I forgot entirely. I'll be right back. He goes back and rummages and pulls out the fantastic, previously displayed Tinkertop Bolt Blaster 1000 and goes, Thank you for your help. I hope it serves you well. And by the way, if there's any problems, just if you couldn't mind making notes, uh, and just feel free to, to mail them off to me uh, so I can perhaps improve on the next Maybe iteration. The testing sort of a thing? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That would be fantastic. I'm so excited. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Ooh, nice. Mm-hmm. Sure. Woo! Okay. Yes. Oh. <laughs> that can happen. That's okay. I love it. That's, that's great. That's, that's, that's very you. It's very you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Clef. Of course, and thank you as well. Um, wherever you're off to, safe travels. Clef, maybe if... Uh... In the future, we come back and need a repair or something spiffy, you'll cut us a deal? I think something can be arranged. I'll be here. <laughs> and hey, I don't know if you know the Schusters at all, but uh, if you see a family walking around, a little bird child, maybe just watch over them for us. That's a very curious series of words you've strung together, <laughs> but I'll I, keep an eye out for you. I acknowledge that and thank you. Of course. Are you becoming a people person, or at least a bird person? Fuck you, Molly. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> but if you're leaving, you should say bye, Risa. And you see behind, uh, Risa kind of sits up with her goggles on, and she was in the back, currently working on something. Goes, oh right, oh you're you're off already. You're leaving. We got to get on the road. Oh, well, uh, it's been fun. We, uh, we we can't thank you enough, and we'll definitely come back in contact next time we're rolling through town. Do, do. I mean, um, thank you for uh, showing me a good time and uh, for, uh, <laughs> for getting this old coat back to some sort of interest in means of constructive work. Sure, we're going to invent many new excellent we're devices. We'll leave her the drinking tokens and the, and the, and the. She goes. But I mean, drinking by proxy, I'll certainly take that. They, they, it. they need use. I think that's fair. Well, next time, I'll owe you around. How about <laughs> Very much take you up on that. Okay. Well, be safe, take care, and uh, till the next time. As you guys kind of exit here, say like, I don't think this design's going to work, Dad. And he's saying, no, trust me. And the door kind of closes behind you. That's going to end well. No, I, I think they're going to they're on the road to recovery. Yeah, something very positive is going to come out of that relationship. Yes. <laughs> Yasha. Yeah. What is on your mind? You're very quiet. You're not thinking about leaving us again, are you? Why would you think that? <laughs> well, you tend to go mum for a while and then you're gone. You are very useful for us. We could do great things together, the not nine of us. I hope you're not thinking of leaving. Well, uh, I'm, I'm not. I'm not at this moment. I think, and if I, I did, I would find my way back to you. Just sometimes things need to be done. Well, no one's going to bully you into a decision, but we're all happy to have you here. You know, my muscles are big. They can accomplish a lot. But uh, we do better with you around. Oh, thank you, Caleb. I, I think you can, you can manage just fine, but I will, I, I, I'm, I'm here for now. She's not going anywhere. What are you, crazy, yeah. Caleb? She's fine. No, Come on. <laughs> it was just a feeling I had. Yeah, She's here. Well, good. I understand. It's fine. What a strange feeling. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, what this, time is it? Uh, at this point, it's 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 well, no, you you've, you've slept for the night and you've woken up the next morning, so it's it's pushing close to midday. Let's let's get on our way soon. Yeah, to a yeah. shitty creek. Let's make our way. All right. Is that where we're going next? Mm-hmm. All right. Ford goes ahead and, and musters the cart. The horses retrieves them from where they were stored during your stay here. On, on the yeah. way, are, are we making our way out of town? Looks like it. Unless you guys have anything else planned. On the way out of town, you said when we came into town there were some guards with with wep- with pistols, with guns. Yes. Do we see any on the way out? Uh, make a perception check as you make your way through uh, the the bottom end of the city. Fourteen. Fourteen. You see, and glancing through, there are two crowns guard that walk by, uh, both gnomish. One of them appears to be carrying uh, a, a heavy sword on the back. Um, the other one does have some sort of strange contraption, like a like a, a firearm pistol at its side. Yeah, I'm gonna try to steal it. Make a slide of hand check. Oh yes. <laughs> With either either made hand or my own hand, whatever. Scans up to you. Too. Okay. Uh, made hand. All right. Uh, what am I doing? Slide of hand. Slide of hand. So your proficiency modifier plus your dex. Oh, uh, nineteen then. Not so. Not sleight of hand. This is a dexterity check. Well, no, no sleight of hand is, is. Oh, sorry. No, it's a sleight of hand check. I'm sorry. Oh, well then yeah. it's twenty-two. Twenty-two. Yeah. I, my my brain. I was thinking of unlocking. Um, it glides past over you. The guard is none the wiser. Okay. It is loaded with a single shot. Great. <laughs> so you have a single shot pistol Thanks. with no ammunition. It's it's loaded with a bullet though, yes. right? Okay. Yes. Cool. Great. That's all I care about. All right. <laughs> with that. You're deserted on an island <laughs> to kill yourself yeah. with. <laughs> and, and, those, and those final Pirate dark style. moments. <laughs> <laughs> this campaign goes really dark suddenly. Yeah. Um, so with that, you guys head out past the fences, the artillery construction ranges, the plumes of smoke and steam, the dual shelved levels of the Gnomish city of Hupperduk, with the people, adventures that you met and left behind, and forge your way on further up the Crisp Vale Roadway, heading towards the Glory Run Road that heads north towards Nugvarat and the Shady Creek Run. Heading on for the next better half of the day, you make a fair amount of travel before the sun eventually sets, before you can reach the crossroads, um, eventually having to pull off to the side of the road to make camp for the first night there. Mm-hmm. So you head off your general curious range there, you set up a small camp. Who's taking first watch? Not a night. Okay. So Not and Caleb, if you wouldn't mind, go ahead and rolling a perception check with advantage, or both of you roll individually. You go. Uh, for the advantage? No, uh, he rolled and now you. Roll. I got a nine. You got it. Okay, here comes. Uh, oh, big uh, eight. All right. So you guys take your first watch. Um, nothing, though you're not paying much attention, nothing seems to transpire during that first watch period. Uh, you finish yeah. it without issue. The second watch comes up, Ford goes ahead and says, I'll, I'll take you. I'll join you. You'll join as well, Yasha? Yeah. All right. So you guys take your your second watch. So Ford and Yasha are currently situated there. Um, two, you're kind of up. It's now kind of pushing past maybe one or two in the morning. The fire is kind of burned low to embers at this point, and you're both kind of staying close for heat. Ford sitting there looking and goes, "I'm kind of." I'm kind of proud of all this, you know? I am too. I'm actually very, very surprised at the choices we've made, especially the choices that I've made. Yeah. Well, these folks have surprised me. A little voice goes like, some people are trying to sleep. <laughs> Sorry, Justin. But I'm awake now, so. Uh, Ford goes like, uh, let's take a walk. 
And so uh, Ford stands up, Jester kind of stands up, and the three of you kind of step away for a minute. And Ford kind of looks up at the stars and goes, Dream's been weird. But for all the visions of darkness out there, it's good to know that somehow maybe we're all putting a little bit of light in there, too. That's a very nice way to put it. Who knows? Maybe we'll <laughs> find ourselves a path somewhere on the coast in the long run. Could show you some of uh, some of my hometown. Maybe some of yours, but maybe not quite as well put together. Jester kind of interjects at this point. Is well, if we do go back, I can show you. Uh, if it is safe, depending on what my mom says, uh, back at uh, uh, the, the, the workplaces where I grew up, the beautiful shorelines, the menage. Have you been to the coast before? I've never been to the coast. Oh, it is so beautiful. It would be incredible. I've seen. And her mouth is not making noise. And you go to talk. And no, no sound comes out of it either. There's a little confusion amongst the three of you. I need you to make a wisdom saving throw, Yasha. Uh, <laughs> What'd you roll? I rolled mm. oh, an 11. In that moment of panic, you go to reach for your weapon, and suddenly your muscles seize up, and your body is unable to move. Your eyes glance back at Ford, who seems to be in the same position. The falchion <laughs> apparates in his hand, but he's unable to move. Jester's the only one who's like. And she turns to run for the group and impacts the chest of what looks to be a dark humanoid figure who's standing there, who grabs and holds her in place as four other dark figures emerge from the shadows around and grab and immediately put their arms around you. You try and resist from the spell effect, make another wisdom saving throw. Oh, God. In Natural 20. Natural Whoa. 20. <gasps> all right, Ford maintains it, but all of this in absolute silence. There is no sound, just shadows and starlight. As you're now being grappled by two men, you, the, the spell breaks from you. However, they're still holding you, as you feel a gag pulled over your mouth, probably one of them, and the other one begins to throw rope around you. You're looking over the side, and you can see another gag shoved into uh, Ford's mouth, and it looks like manacles being shoved onto his arms and legs as he's unable to move. Jester tries to break free off the opposite, now with the natural seven. She's trying, kicking and screaming, but there's no sound coming out, and as she's pushed down, another figure comes up and throws shackles onto her, arms behind her and her legs. She's yelling and yelling, and a gag is pulled over her mouth. What are you doing? Am I, uh, am I un- There's two people that are now coming to grapple you. I take out my weapon and I'm ready to go. All right, at that point, so you pull your weapon, you want to make an attack if you want. Yes. Oh. Okay, uh, 25. 25 hits. Damn. Let's go to roll damage on that. Woo! Uh, Where was this? This is a bad motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just talking about that. Um, <laughs> Thank you for 18. That. 18 damage. Oof. All right. And you have a second attack if you like. Uh, oh, that's a nine. Uh, second one, your first one impacts one guy, and there's a splash of blood. Silent. Once again, no sound here. Uh, the second one swings wide. The other guy captures it. He grabs your arm and pulls you in. Uh, he's going to go ahead and attempt to make an athletics check against you. Go ahead and make an athletics or acrobatics check to try and not be grappled. Uh, uh, 13. That's not going to make it. He grapples and holds you in place. The other one goes and takes and slams manacles onto your wrist and pulls it back, wrenching the blade from your grasp. Your arms are now locked behind you into these metal manacles. Can I try to 
scream out in some way to the Stormlord? You go ahead and scream. Go ahead and make a straight wisdom check. In that moment, as you try and scream out, your vocal cords strained by the sheer force of your voice, no sound comes out, and looking up in the sky, there isn't a single cloud in sight. Probably for the first time in weeks since you've been in this side of Wild Mountain, it's a clear night. No sign of clouds, no sign of storm. In that moment, as you're screaming out, the gag gets put into your mouth and tied behind your head. At which point, you glance over, and you can see Jester being dragged now the manacles are fixed to the back of her ankles, and she's just being pulled to the grass, forward a few feet behind her, still unable to really make out the shapes of these hooded figures that are pulling them through, and you are shoved to the ground. Are my legs as your, still free? your ankles are about to be manacled. Go, go ahead and make another athletics check. Oh. Uh, 25. 25, all righty. With that, uh, you managed to kick free. They can't quite. Uh, get a hold on it, and one figure steps forward, shorter than the others, uh, kind of stout looking. He goes, uh, for, he starts saying, oh, for, the, and his voice just dissipates as he gets closer. He needs to make another wisdom saving throw. 17. 17? All right. They're still kicking and breaking free. They're going to go and try and restrain you once more. Uh, roll one more athletics check. It's not going to do it. As much as you struggle right now, you're by yourself now. Looks like two figures holding you down, and a third one that is frustrated that you've resisted a spell now uh, a second time. Um, they get the manacles on the back of your legs, and now your arms are held behind. Your ankles are now pulled up towards where your hands are, and you are face down in the wet grass in the middle of the night as you feel your body now being dragged by the chains. Dragged, dragged. Your mouth is filled with the taste of uh, the, the the sweat that's kind of poured down, that's that's soaked into the gag that's now forced into your mouth. Uh, grass and grime and mud are grinding against your face. All you can see is kind of the dark shadow there and the bits of star sky ahead until eventually you're lifted upright, <coughs> right back once more. And immediately you can see what looks to be, uh, pulling this aside here, I'm sorry, I closed my note here. You see what looks to be a series of wide carts, large travel caravan carts that are kind of low set, just covered with piles of goods. Looks like sacks and a couple of crates. Fairly sparse looking for travel caravan crates, but you know what you see travel up and down the roads all the time. There are three of them with horses to the front of them. You can see about uh, eight other figures kind of around these carts. And as you're held up there with your mouth gagged and your arms and legs bound, you look off to the side and you can see Ford and Jester also kind of like struggling and unable to, to kind of find their way about. Jester begins to kind of flex against it and you can see like her, her strong physique pushing against it and then she gets smacked upside the side of the cheek by one of the men who kind of pulls and holds her in place. At this point, you hear a voice speak up and say, hey, look what we found, eh? you see a dark figure kind of step closer to you. Glancing up, you can see, through the minimal light, a human man, tall and brutish. His head is completely bald on top, revealing a scarred and tattooed design across one side that curls down into his kind of lightly leathered armored chest. His thick brow hangs over two cold, uncaring eyes. He nods in approval to these three acquisitions that you are revealing a number of golden teeth between his cracked lips. His muscular body is mostly obscured by a cloak and hood beyond that armor. The thug goes, Lorenzo, your instincts are sharp. And so we found ourselves a sudden bounty. The heavy figure, who hasn't spoken to this point, kneels down and grabs the chins of each of you. Grabs Jester, who's like kind of, no, like shaking with anger and fear in her eyes. Looks both sides of her face goes to Ford and kind of lifts the chin, comes to you and kind of grabs Spins your chin. The gag is right there, so you <laughs> kind of, it's like this one here's got some spirit too. <laughs> Our prospects are good with this fine 
two divine blood and one half beast. I'm pleased. Dawson and with the others will head back. Our cages are at capacity now. He stands back up and turns around and heads back to the carts as you're all thrown to your sides again and being dragged through the wet grass and dirt over rocks. You can feel gashes being pulled across your face and shoulder as you're being pulled through the dirt. You're righted once more, and two more goons lift you up towards the back of this mostly empty cart, it seems, just small piles and, and, and boxes. And then suddenly your vision, vision shifts as if you're being pushed through a curtain. And these carts are piled high with cages. And the open one the three of you are shoved into clings behind you. This five foot by five foot box as the three of you are kind of jammed into each other uncomfortably. You look about inside, under what looks to be a darkened tarp that covers the cages. Glancing out the side of your eye, you can see the one next to you. There are other dark humanoid figures kind of quietly whimpering and not moving. You hear, yep, and the horses begin to pick up speed as the creaking of wheels turning get faster, and you feel the cart begin to move. And that's where we're going to finish the night session. Was she taking her and Ford and, and Jeff three, yep. all in the same cart? Yeah, yep. Fuck. But right. we, we heard it with our passive perception. They were in the silence spell. Mm. Yeah. Oh, I forgot to tell you that I never went to sleep. I was watching the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> There'd be some dope investigating at the top when we come back. Maybe he left. Maybe he hit him enough. He left a clue. Oh, it's yeah, possible. Blood. There blood. Were, there, were, there were some. There was blood some struggle. Splatters. Some struggle. CSI shit. Yeah. Up yeah. in here. We get a black light. <laughs> <laughs> we get David Caruso. We yeah. get something yes. here. Yep. Yeah. We'll have dope one liners. <laughs> Yep. The who? It's gonna be great. Oh man, what a foursome. Holy shit. <laughs> it's gonna be interesting. Yeah. Well. <laughs> oh, this was too much. <laughs> Carrie and then this. Oh. Oof. Uh, my, you did the right thing. My heart. With Yes. Uh, Love you guys. We didn't, kill, uh, we didn't kill Ford and Jester, though, nope. by puppeting them. No, we, we took some we tried money, so but hard, that's a good cost for not killing them. <laughs> <sighs> we did drain Laura's uh, coffers, though. That's so, okay. so was that? Uh, it's, uh, to be fair, it's not like the money would do her any good right now. No. <laughs> right. So, 75, uh, 75 oh yeah, gold. They're gonna take all, they're gonna take all of that. So, so if anything, if anything, we well, we, she didn't take her haversack with her when she got up with you. Yeah, we had the haversack. Right. So, and if they were dr, if you go really, to the it's our money now. Mm -hmm. You Man, can you can take that up with Laura. Holding a bundle, a bundle I'm gonna have of access to this right haversack for a while. I'm just saying. Sorry. Uh, oh boy. <laughs> oh boy, I'm gonna get in trouble. Love you, Ashley. Love you. Oh God, you no! Guys. She goes back to New York. We'll you'll hop in when you can. I'll hop in when I can. No, she doesn't. Is that true? What? You're leaving? Yep. Who <laughs> <laughs> knows that? <laughs> Don't go. Uh, I know. So I so play so D &D uh, weeks and weeks and years and years to the old folks' home. I know. I know. We're just we're selfish. With oh, yeah, we are. The skyping isn't the same, yeah. No, no, I feel like I'm in a bunker underneath the ocean. I know, <laughs> but it's when just it a half like second it. of delay, and that's all it takes to make me it's, feel like. No, it's like playing yeah. D&D with General Zod. I mean, I'm happy yeah. to do it, but it is a little weird. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a little, it's a little much. Oh, now I like it. Can I be Terrence Stamp? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> true. Bless you. Oh, well, thank you, thank you, Liam, for making it. Thank you. Thank you, Liam. Uh, thank you, Liam. Thank you, Matt, oh, for like, making this game work you, with yeah. half of a crew. And, 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 I mean, I've been Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> no, congrats, congrats to Laura and Travis. Laura and Travis. Laura and Travis. 
I'm sure they're yeah. sound asleep right now. Just getting a good night. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 never oh again. yeah. The dads get to laugh now. Never again. That <laughs> first <laughs> night is rough. Just you wait, <laughs> Travis, like, Will, and the chickens are all coming home to roost. <laughs> <laughs> this is the most complicated revenge plan I've ever heard. I know. These fucking assholes are like, one of us. When are you going to join our misery? And I'm like, no. no uh, we're good. <laughs> It's not misery. Sleep is all gone. I know. No, it's not misery. It's beautiful and amazing, amazing. and incredible. I love sleep. All right. <laughs> We're going to go so I can go sleep because it's been a very long day. It's been a very long day. Uh, the day is not over. No. For me, at least. I know. That's okay. Yeah. Let's move. Okay. Well, guys, we we'll, we're off next week. So, um, so we'll miss you then. We'll leave you on this fantastic cliffhanger for the next two weeks, and we'll pick up from there uh, with with a guest or two, um, which we'll, we'll, we'll announce uh, as we finalize the schedule. Yeah. Yeah. It means a guest or two. It means we have two guests, and one guest may have on camera work that is waiting to hear oh. if they can make that first session. Oh, okay. So we'll find out. Okay. The life of the actor. Um, but yes, we'll have announcement soon on that. Uh, in the in the meantime, guys, thank you so much for coming with us. We love you. And love you. is it Thursday yet? Oh, Good night. Good night. Oh.